Hello. Yes. Vous m'entendez Oui. Bonjour à tous. Bonjour, vous répondez. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Kira Thusena. Je suis chargée d'affaires à la mission Philippines aux Nations Unies à New York. Et j'ai le très grand plaisir d'être le modérateur euh, des deux segments à venir de la session de ce matin, euh, séance de ce matin. Avant de commencer, permettez-moi d'abord d'appeler les membres du panel euh, pour qu'ils viennent s'asseoir afin que nous puissions commencer. Et ensuite, je vous présenterai officiellement à la réunion. So, um, as you know, the APFSD provides an opportunity for sharing regional perspectives and support the presentation of voluntary national reviews, or VNRs, as resolved in ASCAP Resolution 73-1. This year, 16 countries from the region will be preparing their VNRs, and these are Azerbaijan, Cambodia, Fiji, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Nauru, New Zealand, Pakistan, Palau, the Philippines, Timor-Leste, Tonga, Turkey, Turkmenistan, and Vanuatu. In this session, we will hear from delegates and stakeholders involved in the preparations for these VNRs in a peer learning exercise. So this session um, this morning will be divided into two segments. The first part will um, be a sharing of national experiences on uh, specifically focusing on the involvement of stakeholders in the preparation of the VNRs. And uh, in order for us to have a truly interactive discussion, um, I will also be inviting some delegates from the floor to share their national experience and then pose a question to our distinguished panelists on stage. Um, the, the, the delegates that I will be inviting from, to speak from the floor uh, will have the opportunity to briefly share their national experience in the VNR process. And in the second segment later this morning, uh, we will focus on the support of the UN system uh, that, had, that they have been providing to the countries at the national level who are preparing for their VNRs. And there, we will have the opportunity to also interact with the select uh, uh, UN resident coordinators to hear perspectives from the field or on the ground, so to speak, and which should give us a better perspective of how the UN system can better support the preparations for the VNRs. So um, just some uh, a br um, brief uh, housekeeping reminder. Given the number of um, interventions that we would like to expect to, to hear from, uh, both from our panelists and from the floor, um, I wish to invite speakers to please keep their interventions to a minimum, uh, preferably within four minutes. So now I have the honor to introduce to you formally our distinguished uh, panelists this morning. Uh, Mr. Agus Yoko Pramono, board member of the Audit Board of Indonesia. Ms. Vileni Remengesau, President, Belau Association of Non-Governmental Organizations in Palau. Mr. Kazuhide Umemoto, Deputy Mayor of Kita Kyushu in Japan. Ms. Bakitgul Yeliotsitsova, Senior Expert of Center of Strategic Elaboration and Sustainable Development, JSC Economic Research Institute in Kazakhstan, 
and Mr. Vinya Ariyaratne, President of Sarvodaya Shramadana Movement in Sri Lanka. So to, to start the ball rolling, I have the honor to first call on the distinguished representative of um, Fiji, His Excellency, Mr. Semi Koila Vesau, the Minister of Fisheries of Fiji, to briefly share their national experience in uh, the preparation of their VNRs and to pose a question to one of our panelists. Excellency. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Mbulabinaka, and a very good morning to you all. I want to thank ESCAP to extending the invitation to the Fijian government to provide an update on voluntary national review. This forum provides an opportunity for us to learn from other member states through a peer review, review process and how it can add value to our VNR process as we prepare for the HLPF. Guided by the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and other internationally agreed development goals, Fiji has taken full ownership of the SDGs by main, mainstreaming the development goals in the country's first ever five-year and 20-year National Development Plan, or NDP. The NDP defines our development priorities which are rooted in the principles of sustainability, carbon neutrality, climate resilience, and inclusive socio-economic development. The Fijian government has not only mapped out the country's development plan, but has also identified and assessed the climate risk and vulnerabilities that will pose a significant threat to the NDP through its first ever climate vulnerability assessment, its first ever national development plan, and the first ever Fiji low emission, emission low development strategy, as we believe that the dredging Climate change should be the single most important priority for the climate vulnerable states like Fiji. We have, the addre we have to address climate change in a holistic manner to lock in the steady development gains we have made. The Asia Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development is an important process for feeding information from the Asia and Pacific region into the high level political forum or sustainable development and I'm pleased to inform the forum that our preparation for VNR have been significantly advanced by the Ministry of Economy than pen holders for the first national report on the implementation of SDGs. The process commenced with a high-level sensitization meeting in the VNR in November 2018 and was attended by the Speaker of Parliament and the United Nations Resident Coordinator where we mapped our pathway to the July 2019 HLPF. Ladies and gentlemen, as we learn from the Millennium Development Goals monitoring process, data positive affects the quality of national reports. Therefore, we began our data collection process in early 2018 with the support of the United Nations Development Program. As we near the completion of the draft VNR, we intend to convene the SDGs task force to solicit feedback and further inputs from various stakeholders, including non-government organizations, civil society organizations, women and other marginalized groups through the task force. The Fijian government will also invite written or digital submission from the private sector, non-government organizations, civil society organizations, academia and philotherapy that describes program or initiatives that that are or being implemented to support the achievement of one of our more 17 SDGs. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, Fiji has experienced strong and sustained growth over the years, and we would endeavor to reflect this in our voluntary national review, because our development manager is one of the shared prosperity and inclusiveness, and which aspires to leave no one behind. And I thank you. I would like to ask uh, Mr. August Joko Pramono, board member of the Audit Board of Indonesia, this question. How did the Audit Board, of which you are a member, contribute to the VNR preparations, given that Indonesia will present its review for the second time this year? Can you share any lessons that were applied for the second review? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. 
uh, we are, uh, first of all, I would like to thank for the uh, great presentations from Fiji. And secondly, we are the auditor of the governments. Usually there's a long term, long debate about what should be reported by the government about the achievement. And it is not surprised when the first times of the uh, government report about the uh, achievement SDGs uh, implementation process. Uh, government already achieved 100 and government of Indonesia already achieved 169 uh, criteria of uh, 249 criteria of global criteria in SDGs. It is surprising because what? Because uh, at the time, and you know that uh, SDGs is daily, actually it is a daily government activity. So there's long, long discussion between auditor and the government. What should be recognized and what should be measured? And in 2017, 2017, government of Indonesia uh, and uh, with the discussion with the auditor, which is us, uh, state the presidential decree on SDGs. It is uh, presidential decree number 59, 2017. It is consists of what should be achieved and what's, what is the measurement. So it's, more, it's much more, it is much more easier to auditor, uh, to audit the, the SDGs achievement. Because before that, government only want to report what they already achieved. They, 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 does report, they didn't report the, the failure. They didn't report the failure. That's the, uh, the first uh, milestone that we have achieved with the government. And second, as the part of uh, international organization of uh, Supreme Audit Institution, uh, Audit Board of Republic Indonesia is a part of INTOSAI. Then uh, INTOSAI already have four approach in dealing with the SDGs uh, implementation. First approach is to audit the preparedness. We, we already audit the preparedness of the government of Indonesia in uh, implementing the SDGs. And second, we audit the specific target. We audit the specific target. We choose which target uh, has already reported by the government and we audit. And the third, we promote the accountable, reliable, and inclusive uh, of the government institution of all, 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 all level. And then the fourth is, uh, INTOSAI would like the member become the role model. So in this case, uh, SAI, each SAI of the uh, country should report their sustainability reporting in for their own organization. Uh, how much time do I have? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> three more minutes. Okay, uh, first I would like to uh, share about the how we audit the preparedness uh, of the uh, government of Indonesia and SDGs implementation. Based on INTOSAI framework, there's two uh, main framework of the uh, audit process. The first is we audit the framework of the policy. How, to what extent, the government of Republic Indonesia uh, internalize the global criteria to the national context uh, and regional context of the SDGs implementation. And uh, the second, it is still policy framework. It is about mean of implementation. How much the budget is uh, put in the national budget and what uh, source of funds had already been gathered by the Indonesian government and also how uh, government prioritized the, the activities, the activities of the SDGs uh, program. And the second framework is about the data, is about the data. It is about what is the monitoring and evaluation and reporting process of the government uh, for the SDGs, the SDGs implementations. And uh, there's some kind of uh, certain criteria that already been built by the Intosai uh, community. And we come up to uh, three major findings. Uh, the first, in policy framework, 
we found that uh, the, the agenda of the government of Republic Indonesia is not too coherent and it's not integrative between level of the government. It should be between central government, province level, and district level. It is not uh, uh, coherence, less coherence. And why? We found that this is because of the government cycle. Right now, Indonesia, in central level, there is a, a national election. But this, the local level is already been set two years and one years before. There, so when the new governments will uh, formulate the medium term agenda, the local government, province level and district level already run the program, already run the program. That's, be, that's make the coherence and integrative process of the SDGs implementation become less uh, effective. And the second finding is that the budget, budgeting process or uh, funding or spending of the governments Usually, government bodies, government bodies, only focus on its internal process. It's in the process. They do not focus on the service itself, but they, they just focus on internal process, the business process, the system, the capability of the uh, government's uh, uh, employee. And the third is the data framework. The baseline of the indicator and reliability of the data and also the system of formulating the data become, uh, become difficult because you see that in SDGs, we audit the outcome. Usually auditor audit output. Usually auditor audit the output. But in, our, in SDGs process, auditor audit the outcome. The outcome usually came from several programs or several activities and several government entities. Usually we audit single government entities in a time. But in this process, the government entities should make the information system and reporting system uh, more clear and uh, more precise. That's the major finding of the first step. Uh, I only have 25 seconds. Then, if you would like to know the second, the third, the fourth, please come to site event. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, sir, for uh, emphasizing that the uh, the the theme of uh, this year's forum is on it touches on inclusivity, and that it also applies to the VNR process as well. And thank you also for emphasizing the the importance of data in um, in uh, in the implementation of the SDGs and uh, also the importance of looking at the gaps as and the challenges in addition to the successes um, in the implementation um, so uh, as you as I mentioned earlier we have a number of Pacific countries that are presenting their VNRs this year and uh, we go now to another Pacific country um, I invite the distinguished representative of Tonga uh, Miss Alaisipa Alepate, Principal Assistant of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Delegation of Tonga, uh, to take the floor. Thank you, Madam. The Kingdom of Tonga is joining other countries uh, this year, mm. submitting her voluntary national report to the High Level Political Forum at the UN in July. To leave no one behind, Tonga's VNR process is built on corporate planning and budget process, where it requires the government line ministries to consult uh, partners and stakeholders, including CSOs, private sectors, development and donor partners. The discussion involves integrated plan and fin finance uh, strategies for the country priorities. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have a, a question to ask uh, Vilani from Palau. Um, Vilani, from your experience and that of other civil society organizations uh, in the region with whom you are in contact, how would you recommend to involve different stakeholders and constituencies in the VNR process? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, moderator. Thank you, Tonga. 
Um, in, um, as coming from the civil society and as a person with disability, of course, we want to make sure that really no one is left behind. So while we, in, from experience in my country, of course, we have to plan. Of course, you have to design and plan what, what, what you will be taking. So what we did is, of course, from the previous years of attending regional meetings and workshops, my colleague and I, who's here representing Palau, and working with our focal point on SDG in the government and with our UN present office coordinator, we call ourselves a self-appointed working groups. It's more like an ad hoc. So we formalize ourselves, we put our plan, as the government, we plan for the government to establish and do a mandate with our president office to make sure that we have the executive order to establish the SGG task force. And for us in the CSO, we create our own plan and to involve uh, various stakeholders as our CSO, uh, Belau Association of uh, NGOs, is having seven thematic areas, but we create our own plan. We also have different methods of engagement, engaging various stakeholders to see who are those uh, stakeholders out there and what are those priorities that are these stakeholders are working on, their main priorities. In that way, we know who we, do we target in our services available to those various stakeholders. And then, of course, we continue the dialogue with the government, the private sectors, and other stakeholders. With the SDG task force, it became in place and that when, that's when our CSO umbrella organization in Palau is taking part in this task force with the government where the various ministries of the government own each uh, SDG goals and that's when our as CSO umbrella take part take in each of the various ministries working group and we make sure that each of the CSO NGOs who are represented in our CSO umbrella will take part take in the, participate in those uh, working groups. We also uh, we call it we institutionalize our engagement in terms of leadership and governance making sure that we also collaborate with the private sectors and other stakeholders to make sure that they would understand about, you know, basic understanding about the 2030 development agenda and SDGs, because we know the government don't have time to collaborate with other institutions considering our time between now and July. So we collaborate with those stakeholders as well. That's for the national level. Of course, so as we undergo our process with the CSO began that most of our uh, NGOs don't, they don't have a basic understanding on what is SDG. So we did a more of a basic understanding, a training on what is, uh, what is SDG and what is actually came from MDG to SDG nowadays. And then that's when we did more of an interactive workshop to assess our, C our CSOs and NGOs, what are their common priorities, what actually their work, and how do we link those to the SDG so that all of us can own the SDGs coming from the CSO, so it's just not me and my colleague and those of us that we call ourselves SDG, uh, self-appointed working group. And of course, at the regional level, we also, as first Micronesian country to do the VNR reporting, we collaborate with the Micronesian, uh, we have this forum called Nonprofit Micronesian Congress, and we, co and we attended the, that Congress to make sure to collaborate with other Micronesian countries, as it, uh, FSM and Marshall Islands with respect to Nauru, that we make sure that they understand what is the Dev 2030 development agenda and how do they, under and what are those SDGs and how do they make sure that they involve those CSOs and NGOs in their country in, in understanding the SDG. And of course, this is not the end. The VNR will continue, and of course, our work will continue as we collaborate with different stakeholders around at the national level and regional level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we note the importance that be, that's being placed on institutionalized mechanisms for dialogue and consultations. 
And we also note your sharing about um, the importance of coming up with a common understanding of the goals uh, um, of the 2030 Agenda and the various SDG targets uh, in order to promote ownership of the work ahead. And also, uh, thank you for highlighting that uh, the, the work does not stop with the presentation of the VNR, but it's a continuous uh, process that goes beyond the actual presentation of the VNR. So thank you. Um, having heard from the Pacific countries, we now move to the opposite side of the region. I now have the honor to uh, give the floor to the distinguished uh, representative of Turkey, uh, Ms. Eda Sari, Secre Second Secretary and Deputy Permanent Representative of Turkey to ESCAP. Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. Distinguished national delegations, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Turkish government, I would like to give special thanks to UNESCOP for hosting Asia-Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development and this particular session on the Voluntary National Reviews. I would like to briefly share Turkey's experience in involving other stakeholders in the VNR process. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is an ambitious and comprehensive net framework that affects everyone in the society. It also requires the engagement of all segments of the country in the policy making and implementation processes. Beside governments, private sector, NGOs, academia and citizens should have responsibilities in order to increase the progress of the country. Success of the implementation of SDGs depends on the right steps to be taken by governments at the beginning of the process with active contribution of all stakeholders. Turkey submitted its first voluntary national review report in 2016, being one of the 22 pioneering countries that shared their roadmap in the implementation of SDGs. In the report, initial steps of Turkey towards the implementation of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development has been elaborated by offering a strong ownership to the agenda and through a highly participatory process involving representatives of the public, private institutions and civil society. In 2019, Turkey will present its second VNR report to be submitted to the high-level political forum with the engagement of public institutions and other stakeholders outside the government. These partnerships include civil society organizations, academia, business, vulnerable groups, and local administrations, in addition to various government offices for different sections of VNR report. In the preparation process of our second report, 99 public institutions, 82 private companies, 71 non-governmental organizations, 10 academic institutions, and 105 municipalities have participated in meetings, questionnaires, and online platform projects. The second VNR report will focus on the progress in each of the 17 goals as well as the policies to achieve SDGs by 2030. During the VNR preparation process, the presidency of strategy and budget, being the national focal point of SDGs in Turkey, has organized consultation meetings with all stakeholders for raising awareness on SDGs and hearing the voices of some particular groups. In addition, discussion meetings were organized at the local level in order to reach out beyond the stakeholders in the capital. In the process, 300 experts and administrators from 150 institutions were reached through 20 meetings, six of which were widely participated roundtable meetings. Turkey puts no one left behind principle at the core of its VNR and does its best to engage all stakeholders in the preparation process. During the second VNR preparation process, Turkey has conducted various consultations with different stakeholders to learn their recommendations regarding next steps towards SDG achievement. All the stakeholders were reached via five umbrella representatives of the private sector, UN resident coordinator and UNDP, as well as Turkish Union of Municipalities. In this process, SDGs were distributed among, among stakeholders according to degree of relevance and impact of targets. All these processes made significant contribution to increase awareness on SDGs and consequently ownership of Agenda 2030. Thank you. I would like to direct my question to Mr. Umemato, Deputy Mayor of Kitayushu. The initiative of a VLR, Voluntary Local Review, in your city is commendable. How was the process carried out to align it with the national level standards and how can it feed into the final VNR? Thank you. Uh, 
I am, I am Kazu Hideo Miyamoto, the Deputy Mayor of Kita Kyushu City, Japan. First, I would like to express my gratitude to UNSCAP and all friends for giving us an opportunity to respond to your question. Sorry, from now, I pass over to the translator. <laughs> Please have your earphone ready with channel one. Okay. <laughs> eh, Kita Kyushu Shi wa 1901 nen no Kanei Yahata Seitetsu no sougyo keiki ni Nihon o daihyo suru sangyo to shite shite hatten o shimashita. Ippo, shinkoku na kougai ni mimaare mashita ga joseidan dantai ni oru undo kikkake ni jumin, kiyo, gyosei ga renke kyodo shi kougai o kokuku shimashita. 経済発展と環境保全の両立を実現した日本を代表する環境と技術の町、暮らしやすい町として高く評価をされています。一方で日本政府は2016年に総理大臣を本部長とする SDGs 推進本部、okay. 推進本部を設立しました。その後、2017年の HLPF にて VNR レポートを報告しています。VNR 報告後、日本政府は SDGs の取り組みを加速させており、本市は大きく2つの取り組みで国と深く連携をしています。1つ目は SDGs 未来都市です。国は自治体の取り組みを進めるため、SDGs 未来都市として、北九州市などを選定しました。二つ目は、官民連携プラットフォームです。本市の市長は、その会長に就任をしており、官民を挙げた SDGs の先導役を担っています。日本政府が VNR レポートを報告した翌年、2018年の HLPF において、北九州市の市長は VLR レポートを発表しました。地方政府フォーラムにはアジアの市長で唯一参加をしました VLR ボランタリーローカルレビューとは自治体が自発的に自身の SEGs の取り組みの状況をレビューし国連が推奨する世界共通のフォーマットに沿って報告書にしたものですただこれは地方自治体だけでできるものではありませんここでも SEGs のパートナーシップが必要です。このような国際的プロセスに通じていた研究機関である IGES と共同で世界初の VLR を作成したのです。VLR レポートの報告に前後して、本市は SEGs の取り組みを加速させるため、3つの推進体制を構築しました。1つ目は、市長をトップとして、すべての幹部で構成する推進本部の設置です。市役所全体を挙げて取り組む体制を構築しました。二つ目は SEGs を市民、学校、企業、NPO に広げるために SEGs クラブを創設しました。三つ目は助言機関として SEGs 協議会を立ち上げました。男女の日半々の専門家から構成され、本市が着手している SDGs 計画の改定作業への助言をいただくことになっています。SDGs の地域化が世界的な関心事項となっています。本市は OECD の SDGs 地域化プログラムにアジアで唯一の都市として参画をしており、都市の強みや特徴を客観的に比較できる指標づくりにチャレンジします。これが成功すれば世界初の事例となります。SDGs という世界共通の言語や物差しによって自治体だけでなく市民や学校、企業、NPO の取り組みも世界とつながっていると実感できることになります。また客観的な指標を用いることでモチベーションの向上にもなると思います。SDGs の地域化は大きな可能性を秘めており、我々も大変期待をしています北九州市はインドネシアのスラバヤ市ベトナムのハイホン市
ミャンマーのマンダレー市フィリピンのダバオ市などアジア諸都市との国際協力を進めています詳しいことはこの VLR, ラ VLR レポートをご覧いただければと思います他都市や国との比較もできる非常に効果的なコミュニケーションツールであるため他の都市にもぜひお勧めしたいと思いますこれまで培ってきたアジア太平洋地域とのパートナーシップを一層進め地域全体の SEG 実現に貢献していく決意です I hope our stories on voluntary local review and localization would help you to step forward Thank you very much for your kind attention Thank you Thank you. Thank you.、Um, again, we, we heard about the importance of promoting ownership of the SDG targets and goals,、uh, both by the public and、uh, private sectors, and also、um, including the, the vulnerable sectors,、um, as well as women's groups. And we thank you for the sharing on voluntary local reviews, which is an innovation but it,、uh, has proven to be very helpful in the national effort in, in the process of preparing the VNRs. And of course, also we've heard how partnerships、um, between cities and other local governments have also enriched the process of the preparation of the VNRs.、Um, Now, I would like to give the floor to the distinguished、uh, representative of Pakistan, Mr. Yasir Iqbal Butt, first secretary、uh, of the delegation of Pakistan to ASCAP. Thank you very much,、uh, Madam Moderator, for giving me the floor. Excellencies,、uh, distinguished delegates, Pakistan is one of the countries submitting its voluntary national review report this year. For the VNA report, Pakistan kick started the process with a national consultative meeting on VNR in Islamabad on 24 October 2018. To ensure multi stakeholder engagement, including marginalized and disadvantaged segments of the society, a whole of society approach was adopted. It was decided that, according to the spirit of the VNR process, the federating units should coordinate consultations with stakeholders on various themes and submit provincial reports. Based on the provincial input, the national report would be prepared. Accordingly, a series of multi stakeholder consultations involving parliamentarians, local government representatives, federal and local government officials, private sector, international development partners, civil society organizations, academia, think tank, and media representatives were held in all four provinces and other units. The provincial consultative session was e conducted on four themes that were social, economic, Environment and governance dimensions of SDGs. Each consultation was conducted on seven thematic areas of localization of SDGs and its implementation, which include advocacy and awareness campaigns for SDGs, review of the legal regulatory regime for SDGs, including laws, policies, regulations, institutional mechanism to achieve SDGs, financing to achieve SDGs, including government funding, donors, public private partnership. And key initiatives to achieve SDGs, including innovations, pilot districts, business models, best practices, etc., and challenges faced during the localization of SDGs and overall SDGs implementation and way forward. And finally, monitoring, evaluation, and reporting mechanism devised for SDGs. A parallel consultative process was also initiated by various civil society organizations. These included multi stakeholder consultations in 42 districts. To assess the on ground situation and include their voices. Separate national consultations were organized for persons with disabilities. During the VNA process, key challenges confronted in the, in the implementation of SDGs have been identified with a view to refining policies and programs. Based on the input received from various consultations, a national draft report has been prepared, which is being shared with the stakeholders for their review. It is expected that the final draft will be ready by mid of April 2019. So, after presenting、uh, what Pakistan has been doing、uh, for the VNR process, I would like to direct my question to Ms. Bakhtgul.、Uh, Madam,、uh, data collection and aligning it with the SDGs reporting need has been a great challenge for all VNR countries. How could research institutes help meeting、uh, this challenge and facilitate the VNR preparations? And、uh, I would also like to hear on how your research institute has been involved in VNR preparations 
what challenges you faced and how those challenges were tackled. Uh, please also share the lessons learned in the process. Thank, Thank you. you for the questions. Uh, but first I want to say the following. It's my honor to participate in this forum and share with you our experience on Vienna preparation. Using this opportunity, let me first uh, express our thanks to ESCAPE and other international organizations uh, for their support shown to Kazakhstan in implementation of SDGs, including the Vienna preparation process. Uh, to answer to your question, I think it's better just to say what we've done, our institute, uh, Economic Research Institute. This year, Kazakhstan is presenting the first voluntary national review. Although Kazakhstan's priorities are aligned with many SDGs targets, to ensure proper implementation of SDGs in comprehensive review of our commitments, the coordinating architecture uh, under the leadership of the Deputy Prime Minister was settled. The coordinating office, the Ministry of National Economy of Kazakhstan, authorized the Economic Research Institute to act on its behalf and coordinate the established five thematic interministerial working groups uh, in the review and implementation processes. Focal points from institute, from institute staff were appointed to each working groups who also provided informational and analytical support to these groups and whom also uh, all interested could contact to make yourself engaged. To engage as wide a range of stakeholders as possible, the Institute also supported the groups in the involvement of representatives of the state bodies, civil society, academia, business and international organizations in the review process by acting as the bridge between them. In addition, members of parliament and youth organizations have been invited to the discussions. The rationale was to strengthen the review process by taking considerations from all affected parties' perspectives and to ensure ownership by everyone, not to leave the government with the list of the SDGs and people with their concerns alone. What we have so far, uh, the Institute, with the support of UNDP in Kazakhstan and ESCAPE, organized seminars to strengthen capacity of working groups on uh, assessment of strategic documents in terms of the alignment with SDG goals, SDGs, and also on stakeholders' engagement. Global as well as rational sustainable development targets indicators have been discussed at more than 20 meetings of working groups, and respective recommendations have been taken. Moreover, discussions were taken in special section on SDGs at the Civil Society Forum held in November 2018. At the moment, a Vienna draft, uh, which was compiled by the Institute um, using the information shared with all stakeholders, is undergoing the first evaluation by the stakeholders. Another round of the evaluation will be held in May during the first Forum on Sustainable Development and the, under the framework of Astana Economic Forum, the largest discussion platform in Kazakhstan. These activities have allowed to go beyond the bound of statistical data, raise awareness of SDGs, even among those who are actually implementing the SDGs. To fulfill some gaps by sharing information, knowledge, and experience. However, the main limitation is weak engagement of stakeholders from regions. To overcome it, uh, the Institute is planning to go the re to the regions and discuss SDGs and go through Vienna evaluation. The main lessons we've learned so far is that SDGs, by its approach of stakeholders' engagement, makes um, the way through the path to 2030 easier since everyone opens up towards each other. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Um, thank you for highlighting the importance of um, 
information and analysis support for the institutions that are spearheading the work in the VNR process. Um, we note that um, the process should, in, should not stop with the preparation of the draft VNR itself. Uh, we, we note that uh, the draft itself is also being shared with the stakeholders that were involved in the consultation process to make sure that their perspectives and recommendations uh, were duly um, incorporated and that uh, the process doesn't end with the preparation of the, uh, of the presentation itself but goes beyond it. Uh, again, uh, to ensure that there is ownership um, by all sectors uh, of, of, of the nation. Um, so we, we note uh, the, the expertise that are being um, uh, offered by research institutions. But we also know that the, such expertise and skills necessary for the preparation of the VNR can be found el elsewhere in society. And um, for, on, on that note, let me uh, give the floor now to the distinguished representative of Cambodia, Mr. Theng Pagnathun, um, the delegate of the Royal Government of Cambodia in charge of the Directorate General of Planning of the Ministry of Planning of the Government of Cambodia. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor, uh, giving me this opportunity to say about the Cambodia VNR by uh, focusing how Cambodia has involved with stakeholders in the VNR process. The Royal Government of Cambodia initiated the, pre the preparation for the delivery of the VNR report at the Harvard Political Forum to uh, present the progress toward establishing the instrument and institutional to deliver sustainable, inclusive development in Cambodia and the government plan for accelerate action and to share experience with the peer country and the board assessment of Cambodia CSDG framework and to strengthen mechanism to engage a wider group of stakeholders in delivering the 2030 Agenda. Cambodia SDG consists of 18 goals, 88 targets, and 148 indicators highly adapt to the context new goal for the mining. Target taken from the global set indicator, some from global set, some national alternative, and proxy, around one third each. Cambodia integrate CSDG into our national development plan and budget to the government goal and priority. Cambodia VNR 2019 is fit with the term of empowering people and ensuring inclusive and equity. Leaving no one behind is a hammer of Cambodia record cover all goal special review of the six priority, goal number four, number eight, 10, 13, 16, and 17. Showcase of Cambodia commitment to the SDG and development story. To meet our ultimate goal, leaving no one behind, with the strong experience in achieving more MDG, we starting from our CSDG localized, Cambodia has involved with all stakeholders with broad participation and consultation among government and development partners at the national and sub-national level, including civil society, private sector, and academia. For our VNR process, Cambodia continuing what we have done, especially under the support from uh, UNDP, uh, both in country and regional, we have set up a small group leading by the government and participating by the core member from uh, UN family to work on the content and the draft report based on available data and information. Throughout our hard work, Cambodia do expect we will complete our draft VNR report and send to the United Nations by as on uh, as scheduled. Thank you, Madam Chair.
Thank you um, to the distinguished representative of Cambodia. Um, may I pose a question to uh, Mr. Vinya Ariarantne? Uh, if you could share uh, the experience of volunteer organizations in the preparation of, uh, of your VNR report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, distinguished uh, delegates, uh, fellow panelists. Uh, and I'm really uh, grateful for uh, getting this opportunity to share our own experience uh, representing the volunteer sector. Uh, we are also part of the civil society, uh, but the volunteer spirit and also the volunteer inputs have also made our process in, in Sri Lanka uh, quite meaningful. Sri Lanka uh, presented the, the report, uh, VNR report in 2018 to the United Nations. And um, uh, at the outset, uh, let me say that my views are actually uh, expressed with a uh, lot of sincerity and objectivity and uh, also in fairness to the stakeholders that uh, I represent, uh, some of the views that I express might be uh, holding a dissenting view uh, to some of uh, our uh, government counterparts. But uh, before we look at the VNR process that uh, happened in, in Sri Lanka, I would like to remind ourselves of the spirit of the VNR, which is to really not only facilitate sharing of experiences, including successes, but candidly share challenges and lessons learned. We in the volunteer sector actually work at the local level, uh, mobilizing resources locally and also uh, implementing a lot of actions which are directly uh, contributing towards achieving the uh, SDG goals. So we seek to also, uh, the VNR seek to, in, uh, uh, to, to uh, strengthen policies and institutions from the state uh, and also really facilitate the implementation at the ground level. That is what is expected. So civil society in Sri Lanka and the volunteer sector in very broad terms had been extensively involved in the SDG consultation process, uh, processes at all levels, local, national, regional, and international. And our government counterparts have really made an attempt to involve the civil society. However, uh, we have seen significant political changes happening in Sri Lanka in 2015, just prior to um, uh, the, the VNR process being initiated, that opened up a new era for CSO and government engagement. And uh, there had been very meaningful efforts uh, to engage the voluntary organizations in the process. And the, in 2017, the government itself uh, created a, a dedicated ministry for sustainable development, which demonstrated the commitment. Uh, though this was a welcoming sign, there were uh, also other commendable initiatives, which I will not go into detail here. But the initial momentum that was created uh, could not be maintained due to uh, larger macroeconomic and political issues, I must say. So I think there was a vacuum created. And as a result, some of our own colleagues in the volunteer sector, in the civil society, decided to initiate a parallel process to produce kind of a shadow report. However, notwithstanding any of these, uh, I must say that the report itself and the process brought in a lot of stakeholders and also uh, in particular, the, the notion of volunteerism, the importance of it in really achieving the SDG goals uh, was very much emphasized uh, and uh, particularly uh, as a country which has been affected by a violent armed conflict for nearly three decades, uh, volunteerism was seen in the VNR process and in the report itself as an instrument for peace building and social cohesion in Sri Lanka. And also in other areas where actually there was a new legitimacy given to volunteer efforts, which include finding uh, creative solutions uh, to some of the problems we are facing and the volunteer sector had already come up with solutions. It's not that we are starting anew. And also giving that recognition in the VNR process, I think was very commendable. And also ensuring community ownership. Now it's, it's government policy. So we have something uh, official uh, to mobilize the communities. And also, of course, not the mechanical process of generating data, but also reality checks to be brought forward by communities themselves through volunteer process. And uh, also, skill development uh, is very an area that we really need, particularly in a situation where youth unemployment is uh, prevalent and youth are seeking opportunities not within their own countries, but elsewhere. So I would like to conclude by saying 
that the VNR process may have run into uh, challenges in terms of fully involving all the stakeholders, inclu including the volunteer sector. I think the outcome has been very encouraging, where now there is a lot of space created for volunteerism, and we look forward to working with all stakeholders, the government, the private sector, the academia, and particularly our direct stakeholders, the communities, in promoting the volunteer spirit in achieving SDG in Sri Lanka. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we appreciate the point raised uh, that uh, um, the importance of integrating the SDGs into our respective national development plans as well as the budget uh, because this will facilitate implementation on the ground and uh, partnerships uh, on the ground as well and that uh, this approach will actually accelerate action on uh, the work of implementing the SDGs. We also uh, note the importance of the volunteerism um, uh, initiative, the spirit of volunteerism. This is after all um, in line with the spirit of inclusiveness that the SDGs uh, um, is contextualized in. And uh, we, we appreciate that um, this, this, the multi-stakeholder approach should also embrace uh, dissenting views uh, because this will only provide a more uh, holistic and more uh, uh, realistic uh, presentation of the, the situation of the country. And also, um, uh, like you said, a reality check on where we are and which in the end will promote a sense of ownership of the entire, of the whole country all sectors uh, that are involved in the VNR process preparation. So um, we have five more minutes for this uh, segment. If there is any other question on the floor, we can accommodate that. Okay, there, there are no questions. So uh, at this point, I wish to thank our distinguished uh, panelists for spending this uh, morning with us today. Thank you for your very insightful sharing. And please uh, join me in, in thanking them uh, through a round of applause. And please give us two minutes while we prepare the stage for the next round of panelists. Thank you.
Dito kayo. Okay. So may I please request everyone to take their seats. We are about to start the second session. Everyone, please take your seats now. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, this second segment will deal with uh, with the re with the support that the UN system is. Uh, giving to the national governments um, in the process of preparing their VNRs. Um, I should add that this year uh, we saw the implementation of the repositioning of the, of the UN development system and the aim of the repositioning is to um, equip the United Nations development system to be better uh, placed to give the support that is required by the member states in their work of implementing the SDGs and the 2030 Sustainable Development uh, Agenda. So let me now um, welcome uh, our second set of distinguished panelists. Uh, first, uh, I welcome Her Excellency Rosemary Edelion, Under Secretary for Policy and Planning of the National Economic and Development Authority of the Philippines. Uh, and then I welcome Ms. Jambal Dojizuren, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, she's the Head, Development, Policy, and Planning Division of the National Development Agency of Mongolia. And uh, Mr. Nabi Nabizadeh, Chief Advisor, Sustainable Development and Social Policy Department, Ministry of Economy of Azerbaijan. Ms. Juliet K. Hakwa, Head of Monitoring and Evaluation Unit, Department of Strategic Policy, Planning, and Aid Coordination, of the Office of the Prime Minister of Vanuatu, and Ms. Brida Suarez, General Coordinator of the Unite of Planning, of the Unit of Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation of the Office of the Prime Minister of Timor-Leste. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, we will be interacting with the select uh, UN resident coordinators who are attending this forum. And uh, they, in part, will share with us briefly on how their UN uh, office in, in those capitals have done in support of the VNR preparations. Um, and then we invite the, these UN resident coordinators to pose a question to our panelists. So um, to start the discussion, let me give the floor to uh, the resident coordinator for Indonesia, Ms. Anita Nirodi. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Let me uh, first of all begin by saying that uh, uh, Indonesia will be presenting its VNR for the second time uh, at the HLPF this year. And uh, the United Nations in Indonesia has been working very closely with the national institutional structure that has been established by the government of Indonesia for the implementation uh, of the SDGs uh, that is headed by BAPENAS, the Ministry of uh, Planning and Development. And we are partnering with uh, Indonesia in supporting uh, the VNR process uh, in some of the following areas. Firstly, uh, in terms of technical assistance, and this is really through data and analysis and helping frame the narrative around uh, each of the six goals that will be reviewed at the HLPF, including on the interconnectedness of the goals uh, and between the goals on which uh, Indonesia actually places very high priority. Uh, the second is uh, support to the stakeholder consultations uh, with CSOs, the media, philanthropy, the private sector uh, uh, and um, the business community uh, and to help facilitate uh, a broad range of consultations that are happening uh, around uh, the review of the goals. Uh, thirdly, we are also working very closely on the communications front to help showcase uh, progress around each of these goals uh, and to showcase progress on the overall uh, VNR process. Uh, and this will be done uh, through several ways, uh, through advocacy, messaging, uh, video, and so on. And we are also partnering with the government of Indonesia on a side event uh, 
uh, on an SDG roadmap uh, for children at the HLPF. Um, my uh, question uh, will be for the representative uh, of the Republic of Philippines, Her Excellency, Madam Rosemary Adilion. Uh, question will be, uh, what were the lessons uh, that uh, the Philippines has learned from your participation in the first Vienna? And the second question is, as an archipelagic nation, uh, how were the communities in the different islands involved uh, in the uh, consultation processes that you are engaging in, uh, in developing the VNR, and what was the role uh, of the UN in actually uh, working with you on that process? Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, well, as already mentioned, this is the second time that the Philippines is uh, uh, participating in this VNR. Um, in the MDG era, we were actually among the last ones to report, but in the SDG era, we are among the first ones to report. And uh, what we learned is um, uh, the VNR is actually, the, the process itself is as important as, as, as the product. And so we are using the VNR as, um, well, two or three ways. One is um, we're using the VNR as, as, uh, as reckoning dates. We actually plan to participate in uh, two more after this. <laughs> and so each time our, we hope to be able to report on the progress, uh, not just in the efforts with respect to uh, the implementation, but also the outcomes that we have been achieving towards the SDG. From the first uh, VNR, so th this was in 2016, it was more as uh, an articulation of, uh, of commitments and taking stock of what we have learned from the MDGs. And from there, we learned uh, three things essentially. One is that you you need sustained commitment and we hope to do this also by having you know repeated vnrs <laughs> and then the second is uh there really needs to be an implementation plan complete with institutional arrangements and and, and financing and the third one is um uh, you need a, a, a very good data monitoring system, one that is able to exact accountability. So we're using the VNR, like I said, one is reckoning dates. The second, we're also using the VNR process as a, you know, touching base with the, the stakeholders. And for this, uh, actually, the, the UN system has been very, very helpful to us. Uh, the first thing we did was really to um, come up with what we call nationally determined targets on the SDGs. Many of these have already been integrated in the Philippine Development Plan. As I've always mentioned, uh, uh, our SDG process actually began with the formulation of the PDP. So, but our Philippine Development Plan is medium term. It goes only all the way to 2022. And so the first thing we did was to um, come up with targets that we hope to achieve all the way to 2030. Uh, actually 2022 and then the next uh, PDP and then to 2030. And for this, we were guided by the UN SCAP methodology on the champion method. Uh, and then we have actually been uh, going around uh, the country and uh, uh, consulting with the stakeholders. We did state, uh, sorry, uh, island-wide consultations, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Uh, we have also been using our own NEDA processes to be able to, to go around the, con the country. Uh, for the island-wide consultations, actually it's been UNICEF that, uh, that's been helping us. UNICEF also supported our effort to come up with an SDG website. We now have an, an online platform on which to engage with our stakeholders and it's also for information dissemination. Uh, UNICEF has also been providing us technical assistance on how to do this, uh, adopt uh, a child lens, uh, child rights based lens uh, in implementing the SDG. In fact, this Saturday, we will be consulting with the children and the youth groups, presenting to them the VNR report, not just to solicit their comments, but also, uh, you know, ways on going forward. We're also using this, uh, this uh, VNRs, uh, uh, oh, is, uh, we're also conducting consultations with the workers, and this is with the help of the ILO. 
And the UNDP itself is also doing, uh, it's, uh, it's helping us with the initiatives uh, with the local governments uh, and uh, actually with the CSOs and the, and the, and the business sector. So actually we're, we're all one big family <laughs> with respect to the uh, implementation of the Agenda 2030. We're using the VNR process actually, the, the, the interest, the renewed interest uh, because of this VNR reporting to galvanize action, uh, to galvanize uh, commitments uh, towards the Agenda 2030. And of course, we always uh, tell them that this is actually um, part and parcel. It's actually also a necessary condition for, for us to achieve our long-term vision for the Philippines. Uh, as we always say, it's for you know, social cohesion, having a comfortable lifestyle and a secure future. Thank you. Thank you for, for those uh, inputs. Um, we note that um, the role really of the UN uh, at the national level is to provide uh, mainly technical assistance in, to, to the member state as they work towards nationally determined goals and priorities. I think that that needs to be emphasized. It is a state-led exercise, but with uh, support uh, given by the UN um, system uh, through the resident coordinators and the UN country teams. And we also note that the process of preparing the VNR is, uh, the exercise itself is very useful because it will uh, consolidate um, and uh, unite efforts uh, towards achieving a, a common goal. Um, and we also note there that in, in, in the activities, uh, for instance, in the consultations, uh, the UN um, mechanisms, UN information, UN, uh, UN me um, methodologies uh, have come to be very helpful and uh, beneficial. So thank you for, for those sharings. Before I proceed, uh, I just want to share that if we have enough time at the end of this session, uh, we may invite some, some more interventions from the floor uh, for our panelists. So at this uh, point, may I invite uh, the resident coordinator in Pakistan, uh, Mr. Neil Buhne, uh, to take the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, very much in the spirit of uh, what you just presented, uh, the role of the uh, country team in Pakistan has been to support the leadership of the government in uh, preparing the VNR, but working very much uh, hand in hand uh, based on uh, long-established cooperation going back to October 2015, where we have been uh, supporting the Ministry of Planning and Development at the federal level and the PND departments at the provincial level in uh, their uh, integration of the SDGs into planning and budgeting and subsequent implementation of them. So we've been uh, very much involved uh, with the process of consultations that the representative of Pakistan uh, just outlined uh, about an hour ago. Uh, we've been involved with providing feedback on the draft report. Um, we produced through UNDP um, a national human development report about uh, 10 months or so ago. And the lead author of that, Dr. Adil Najam, has been brought in to advise on the VNR process and has been part of the Committee on Development Policy that's uh, been key in the national leadership of this. And he's been involved with earlier uh, HLPFs uh, in his capacity based in the United States at Boston University. Um, we're also going to try to help uh, the government in the design and production of the report. We've been involved with the stakeholder consultations. And all this work builds on uh, quite deep involvement with the SDGs from uh, all of us in the team, uh, notably uh, UNICEF's work on education, WHO's work with the government on health, FAO, WFP on zero hunger, UNIDO on industry and innovation, UNIP on responsible consumption and production, and those are just a few examples with uh, UNDP playing a key role in the support to these SDG units. Uh, I wanted to highlight um, sort of the work that uh, the UN team did uh, in uh, providing baseline data on the agency relevant SDG indicators and note with appreciation ESCAP's positive role in this and uh, also the role that they've played in uh, helping put together a harmonized approach and uh, inform the national process from regional experience. 
Uh, mm -hmm. At the end of April 2019, there's going to be a workshop on the draft by the government that will involve the range of stakeholders and involve the UN agencies. Uh, just yesterday, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan of Pakistan announced a new national poverty alleviation strategy uh, called ASAS, which means compassion in Urdu. And a lot of the uh, elements uh, in that strategy uh, are very much in line with the approach in the VNR as well. With that experience from the UN and Pakistan, I, I have a question uh, to Her Excellency uh, Ms. Bulgantuya Kurul Batar, the Vice Minister of Planning of Mongolia, uh, drawing on some of our experience from Pakistan. What do you feel are the main challenges, outcomes and lessons learned, uh, in particular in terms of inclusiveness uh, from your experience in Mongolia with the VNR process? And how do you think that's going to help with after the VNR in uh, galvanizing action on implementing or accelerating progress on the Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question and good morning everybody. And uh, so I am presenting here Mongolia experience on behalf of the, uh, the Ms. Bultantuya, Vice Minister. So um, Mongolia uh, Vienna preparation uh, is being managed by uh, uh, in two levels at the government. Uh, at the government. And the higher level, uh, Prime Minister is leading uh, the SDG National Council uh, at the national level. So uh, uh, they are providing the general guidance uh, not only for the preparation of the VNI in Mongolia but for the implementation of SDGs as well. And then um, uh, the preparation of the Vienna project has started last year and with the Prime Minister's resolution we established a national working group involving different stakeholders including the government representatives and uh, civil society, academia and private sector. So that working group is basically guiding overall uh, you know, uh, guidance to the preparation of the Vienna in the country. And uh, <clears throat> last uh, 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 since last uh, autumn, so we uh, organized two national consultations involving also different stakeholders, discussing that how, uh, what our VNR will be uh, uh, talking about, what kind of scope that we will be identifying in the report. And uh, so um, uh, based on that two consultations, uh, the working group has been working on the outline of the report. So, and then uh, now we are in the stage of drafting of the report. So, uh, based on, according to the outline, the, our report basically looking at the overall SDGs, SDG profiling, looking at the... Oops. Uh, looking at the overall SDG, uh, so in terms of the trends and challenges and then key recommendations. So, uh, Based, uh, even though we are looking at the whole SDGs, so we, uh, the analysis is looking at the key leverage points, especially from the, uh, the policy perspectives, that how uh, policy uh, alignment and how policy coordination is enabling uh, for the SDG implementation in Mongolia, etc., in institutional aspects as well, and financial aspects, and data monitoring, monitoring aspects. And then the second part of the, uh, our report is focusing on, on specific development challenges. So we selected as air pollution is the one of the key challenges in Mongolia. So um, even uh, the air pollution has been uh, selected and analyzed uh, through the report. So basically we will be giving the key, um, two key messages to the policymakers. One, that how the, uh, the development challenges such as the air pollution will be looked at from the cross-cutting perspectives, bigger perspectives. And then, um, for instance, from what is the key drivers of the air pollution uh, and underlying causes. And then what is also the impacts from the air pollution. And then identifying key bottlenecks and then uh, proposing some policy responses. This is the, uh, one of the uh, key uh, uh, messages will be given. And second message to the government is like, uh, there is a quite lot of development challenges are facing in the country. So uh, for addressing any development challenges, can, uh, challenges, so the modality that we are using in the report for uh, air pollution can be used for, uh, for, you know, for address and identifying policy interventions in the uh, for that as well. And um, 
Uh, now, um, next week, we will be organizing uh, national uh, consultations, sharing the draft of the report. Uh, so, inviting uh, the whole stakeholders to be commenting on the draft. And also, last week, uh, we organized a series of focus group discussions because the report has identified, the draft report has identified uh, the key, um, uh, you know, vulnerable groups. Because of the leaving no one behind concept, we identified six vulnerable groups. So, and based on the draft uh, recommendations, uh, so um, the, we discussed uh, each of the vulnerable groups that how, what they aspect, I mean, their concerns are reflected and uh, any further recommendations, etc. So, um, and then by next week, our draft report also will be uploaded to our website for the public uh, responses as well. And then uh, towards the end of uh, April, so we will be uh, sharing the, the report to the uh, high-level uh, STG committee chaired by the Prime Minister for the adoption. And then the uh, whole process has been supported by uh, UN uh, uh, Coordination Office. So um, in the beginning, uh, UN uh, custodian offices has been uh, approached us uh, separately, bilaterally. So um, the, our National Development Agency has been giving some advice to the UN offices to uh, support us through the consolidated way through the UN RC office. So now um, the RC office is uh, consolidating all the support uh, and uh, so we are giving uh, the one uh, one wind of support is received through them and I would like to uh, also thank here for the UNRC office in Mongolia chaired by Ms. Beate Trunkman for uh, his uh, excellent leadership for the consolidated support from the UN side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we, we note in the interventions from uh, the RC and uh, from, from Mongolia the importance of uh, the UN country team delivering as one. Uh, in a sense, consolidating all of the efforts of the various UN agencies, funds and programs present in the member state to support as one entity uh, the nationally defined priorities and goals uh, of the member state. And we also thank the input that this, uh, this support uh, goes all the way to the provincial level. Um, which uh, is essentially what the SDGs is about. It's about localizing uh, the goals and uh, the, the work towards implementing them. Um, also, uh, the, this, this uh, new strengthened role of the RC is precisely what the repositioning of the UN development system is about. It's about empowering the resident coordinator to better consolidate the UN uh, offices, the UN support on the ground uh, to help the member state in achieving the SDGs. So thank you for those, those inputs. Um, we will now uh, move again from Central Asia back to the Pacific. And I, am call, I, I wish to give the floor now to um, the resident coordinator in Samoa, Ms. Simona Marinescu. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I would like, on behalf of the UN country team in Samoa, covering all Sokuk Islands, Tokelau and Niue, to commend all countries reporting this year and to also thank our partners for um, allowing us to be very effective in supporting uh, the review process. Just very briefly, um, Samoa will present its second VNR in 2020. Samoa was one of the very few countries um, reporting in 2016 primarily on the process of aligning the sustainable development goals with national strategies and with other international frameworks, including the Samoa pathway, and is now preparing again, uh, as mentioned, for the second VNR. In the pursuit of the uh, sustainable development agenda and in order to effectively partner with the UN system, and I would add to that the UN ESCAP, the government established an SDG task force that allows us to be very coherent into, again, receiving the necessary inputs from line ministries and also ensuring cross-sector uh, there is a full alignment of efforts and of budgets and of um, interventions. Also to ensure that there is a full 
um, ownership by all members of the society. Um, Samoa conducts regularly SDG socialization campaigns that bring non-state actors into the discussion as to what the priorities are, what the challenges are, and what the efforts should be uh, moving forward. And uh, very importantly, on the Leaving No One Behind agenda, uh, Samoa has um, created a, a system that may be very well uh, useful to other countries in the Pacific to ensure that we take a human rights approach to uh, the implementation of the SDGs, the human rights agenda ensuring that no one is left behind and also linking recommendations of the Universal Periodic Review with uh, progress against the SDGs. I also want to mention that in support of all the countries in the Pacific, the Pacific Island Forum um, through the Secretariat established a peer review mechanism that is essential, again, to ensure quality um, of reporting. But um, taking um, everyone's back to the discussion in 2015, um, we've all identified uh, multiple drivers of uh, uh, promoting development. However, sustainable development has three main enablers behind. One being the uh, use of social and environmental standards, um, integration of such standards in everything we do, taking a risk-informed approach to the implementation of the SDGs, and the third one, uh, using high-quality evidence that goes beyond data. So um, we support uh, from our colleagues uh, covering Vanuatu. I'm aware of um, the support that is being provided to the country. And I wish to say that, uh, to clarify, that my question goes to the uh, distinguished representative of Vanuatu, Ms. Juliet uh, Hakwa. Um, our support comes through um, line ministries, various UN agencies uh, engaging with line ministries and uh, also um, uh, trying to mobilize a, a broader base of uh, non-governmental actors into the pursuit of the SDGs. So the questions would be uh, for Vanuatu, whether um, the United Nations uh, could and should take a different approach um, in um, engaging with uh, various parts of the government to strengthen coordination, to strengthen coherence. Is there any scope for the UN to support along that line? The second question would be, um, is there any uh, advice that we can receive from the government of, uh, of Vanuatu on how to uh, ensure a broader participation of non-government actors? And most importantly, given that we should be credible in our joint reporting in the implementation of the SDGs, is there a um, scope for the United Nations to support uh, strengthening the um, evaluation capacity um, on the ground, the quality of evidence that is um, uh, accompanying uh, the data that is reported. And again, um, I'm talking about evidence that goes beyond numbers, that goes beyond figures, that looks into um, uh, quality feedback received on the progress that is being reported, as we are all one family in the pursuit of the SDGs. I thank you. Thank you and good morning. Uh, thank you to the moderator and I'd just like to say uh, thank you for the opportunity for having us today to just share some experiences from our Vienna um, processes. Um, I acknowledge the questions that came from the UNRC uh, coordinator from Samoa and I will try my best to, um, to keep within the time limits. Um, just in terms of some general reflections, um, the issues of scope and how participation and engagement and how UN agencies can come in to support countries, it's important to look at the context of how the SDGs have been um, integrated into national planning priorities. And like many other countries and member states here, Vanuatu has also taken that approach where we have integrated the SDGs into our national planning priorities. Um, and we have tried our best to align as many of the uh, targets and indicators from within the broad 17 goals into our national development plan. Uh, and we currently have around 122 indicators and targets that are integrated in there. What that has meant in terms of a process is that we are not overburdened by reporting. And I just want to point out that this sort of activity and initiative has come through the assistance that we receive from the UN agencies and also the other regional partners, many of which are here today, like Pacific Island Forum Secretariat and um, uh, 
SPC and UNSCAP Pacific Office, of course, as well. Um, as part of our commitment to entail implementation uh, over the next 15 year duration of the plan, we also have developed other implementation mechanisms. So we have a national planning framework that looks at how we align planning from that national planning level through to the sector strategies, uh, how the ministries do their planning, um, and also provincial authorities um, and municipalities and, and other agencies and how that can all feed in. Because you can't talk about how SDGs and national planning is all sorted out if you don't actually do that alignment and make sure that everything is able to report to, to a platform um, that speaks to how we want to manage our development priorities. We also have a, um, a national plan m and &E framework that also lays out how we want to achieve these, uh, these broad goals within the three pillars of our national plan. And we also have a national m and &E policy, which also lays out how the government wants to do uh, monitoring and evaluation across all sectors from a national level, so how we report through the national planning priorities, how the ministries report, and even other agencies um, such as the Reserve Bank and other agencies that also contribute to national accounts, which are very important um, annual reporting mechanisms that we also need in order to inform how we perform against our national priorities, as well as SDGs and, and other, uh, other reporting requirements. Under the auspices of our National Statistics Office, we also have just recently launched a National Indicators Database, which we're really excited about. And that lists all of our national level indicators, but it also looks at how we integrate reports from other agencies. And um, it was very important to have something like this in place because then it also means that we are not, uh, we're able to identify gaps because one of the challenges that we face, and I've, I've heard that from a few other colleagues today, is, is the issue of data, um, administrative data, where things are kept, whether they're kept in different agencies, and how we can actually access that to make sure that when we are doing reports such as the VNR and, and other reporting on other global or regional platforms, that we're able to get a clear picture and a, uh, and a more accurate picture on, on how we are actually progressing in different things. In terms of support, um, specifically with how the UN can support what things that are going on um, right now, I think, like I've said, we, we must acknowledge that there has been a lot of support given already. We have a lot of programs that are ongoing. Um, SBC have a very good ongoing statistical support program with our statistics office where they look at methodology and data sets and they help in terms of getting that regional information or regional data sets that we might not have um, access to and that will help inform our VNR process. So that is ongoing. Um, I do also want to acknowledge that we, we see the value uh, in having peer-to-peer peer -peer learning we support that, and I will echo the sentiments of my Fijian colleagues earlier this morning um, that there is there is value in sharing experiences from around the region, and we we will be benefiting very soon from having a peer review that will be um, facilitated through the Pacific Island Forum Secretariat um, mm -hmm. to look at our Vienna process, and we'll probably be having around three different Pacific countries to come in, some who have already done a Vienna, and some who will be in the process of, of doing one next year. So that sort of sharing um, and support that uh, would be something that would be welcome uh, from our point of view. Also in terms of data and methodology, um, accessibility but also in particular methodology is, is quite, uh, it's is something that is a bit of a concern to us in the sense that um, for certain SDG indicators there is no regional methodology. Uh, one specific example that I can think of is poverty. In the Pacific we define poverty maybe a little bit different. Um, and, you know, perhaps it's looking at a subset or what kind of proxies we could have where you would say, does poverty mean lack of access to services versus whether you have a dollar twenty-five a day um, to exist on. So these are some of those regional conversations perhaps that um, could be an area where UN agencies and our other partners could come in and even the specific UN agencies that look at things such as poverty or, or labor force mobility and, and how that relates to economies like ours which are largely subsistence as well. So these are things that we will be highlighting in our VNR report as it's our first one uh, as a way of going forward and lessons learned where we could work with, uh, with UN agencies to better. I think my most 
probably the most important thing that I would like to raise uh, in my, uh, my, my five minutes before I run out of time, and I think I have, um, is that because we've invested time and energy um, into developing systems and mechanisms such as our national planning framework, a national ME policy, we have a very good um, national ME framework. It's important that when we have agency support that you please use, try as, as much as possible to work with agencies to use the existing systems. And that's what we would encourage because we've invested all this time uh, and energy and, and funds, a lot of it through the support from our UN partners and other agencies that we try and use what's already been set up and not to create um, new activities, but to try and build on that, to use the systems and also the people that have been trained and have benefited from uh, attending trainings and sessions such as this to actually use that to, uh, to further our VNR process, the SDG reporting and national priorities priorities and, and advancement as well. So thank you, moderator. I'll stop there. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, again, we heard about um, the importance of alignment, not only uh, in, 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 in um, the SDGs uh, with the national development plans, but also um, in the work programs of the line agencies. And uh, here we, we acknowledge the support being given by the UN um, in this regard. And then we also heard about the human rights approach and how this is linked to the universal, uh, the UPR, uh, the Human Rights Council. Uh, after all, the SDGs is people-centered, people so this uh, makes sense. And then we also he uh, heard about the importance of peer review um, and how this uh, further enriches the, the, the VNR preparation process. And finally, we, have, uh, we, we heard about um, how important it is for the UN to support the mechanisms, um, systems, um, and other methodologies developed by member states uh, in, in their work of implementing the SDGs. Um, so thank you. Uh, now let me turn to uh, the East and Northeast Asian subregion, and I give the floor to the resident coordinator in the DPRK, Mr. Tapan Mishra. Thank you, madam. Before I share, ask my question, uh, let me give you a little brief about the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Now, in DPR Korea, they are going for a, the, they're planning to go for the VNR next year in July 2020. The UN in DPR Korea has been uh, very engaged with the government in, uh, we've signed a UN strategic framework, which is the UNDAF equivalent, completely aligned to the uh, SDGs. We launched the SDGs in 20, uh, September 2015 to get uh, um, the entire uh, agenda working for the people. However, it's been very difficult because of the geopolitical context that the country is currently to engage in development and the space is quite limited. The most of the work that the UN agencies do there is primarily humanitarian, although the government is leading the front in terms of the development agenda themselves. Now, at the UN, we are trying our best to work as closely with the government as possible to enable them to prepare themselves for the VNR for 2020. We are working on some uh, workshops with them with support from SCAP and all other UN agencies working closely. But uh, definitely these are areas of concern that we have of getting through all the uh, procedures of getting permissions to engage in that area. Uh, therefore, um, we are looking more in terms of other experiences from other countries which can help us to do our best to support the government of DPR Korea in being ready for the VNR in uh, July 2020. So with that brief um, outline, because I'm not going into details because uh, on the each facet of development, we can talk about um, some of the um, principles that we also have on the human rights-based approach on gender equality and empowerment, uh, on environmental sustainability, we are working we try and do our best to ensure that these programs that we have are aligned to the uh, agreement we had in the uh, UN strategic framework and the UN uh, the, the, and the sustainable development goals. Um, I'm looking to here to learn more from the experiences of others and therefore I have a question for Mr. Uh, Nabi Nabizadeh, the chief advisor 
of the Sustainable Development and Social Policy Develop Department of the Ministry of Economy of Azerbaijan. And if I may ask him that this year they would be presenting their VNR for the second time. So how was the process different this time? And what can the UN system learn from your experiences to support countries in the preparation of the VNRs? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, distinguished uh, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Tapan, thank you very much for the uh, question. And taking opportunity, I would like to emphasize that it's my pleasure to sit between these beautiful ladies. Uh, so let me start. Uh, achieving full implementation of SDGs is only possible with firm political commitment. And yes, sustainable development is a political choice and can be ensured by high-level leadership uh, that mobilizes all sectors of government and as well as all levels of society to play their crucial role. As you already are aware, Azerbaijan uh, submitted its first VNR in 2017 and this year it will submit its second VNR. Uh, in 2017, in partnership with the United Nations Office in Azerbaijan, uh, our government organized, developed advocacy campaign strategy for 2017 and 2019 years in line with the principle of SDGs, no one living behind. And following up this strategy, the government of Azerbaijan organized uh, numbers of meetings with interested stakeholders uh, to aware the to raise the awareness, public awareness in a country. As is known, achievement of SDGs requires uh, balanced coordination between international and national uh, level, at the national level, as well as extensive consultancies at the governmental level. Uh, in a view of above mentioned in 2016, by the decree of the president, National Coordination Council for Sustainable Development was established under the leadership of our Deputy Prime Minister. The Council comprises Minister of Economy as well as the Secretariat and in line with these four uh, thematic working groups which are, I'm sorry, uh, economic growth and decent jobs uh, social development, environmental issues, monitoring and evaluation groups. Further on, on the way of implementation of SDGs and advocacy of the SDGs, the government of Azerbaijan organized Republic Innovation Contest in a support of implementation of SDGs, encourage innovation and support of in implementation of our Azerbaijan 2020, the outlook for the future development concept. More than 200 projects uh, covering social, economic, and environmental issues have been submitted to the contest organized by the Ministry of Economy. Um, I would like to point out that uh, the Memorandum of Understanding was signed between the Minister of Economy, Minister of Transport, Communication and High Technologies, State Agency for Public Service and Social Innovation under the President, and at last National Academy of Science in order to support, in order to coordinate joint activities uh, in organizing annual innovation contests uh, until 2013. Uh, I want to mention that in 2017, MAPS mission conducted in Azerbaijan in order to analyze the relevance of SDGs to national priorities, a mapping of national strategies and the relevant sector plans against the SDG targets. I would like to emphasize that the government of Azerbaijan in partnership with UNDP organized in October 2018, the high-level regional uh, forum on sustainable development, namely Baku Forum Sustainable Development, which brought together 
uh, high-level representatives from European and Asian countries responsible for implementation of SDGs at national level, as well as international and local experts and interested stakeholders uh, to discuss and share their uh, challenge and best experiences around the globe. And my last point, I sincerely hope this forum will inspire us to accelerate action, bring innovation and create new partnerships to those you are already part of. And I wish all of you much success in implementation of your prioritized goals in coming years. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you for mentioning the UN Development Assistance Framework. Um, as we are all aware, this is the key document that defines the cooperation between each member state and the UN country team led by the resident coordinator. So this is uh, basically the document that spells out how the UN is supposed to support the member state in, in, uh, in achieving the SDGs and their nationally determined uh, priorities. We also thank you for um, emphasizing the importance of political commitment. Um, in, in working towards the achievement of the SDGs and the importance as well of national, a strong national leadership which uh, would galvanize the, the rest of the, of the, community, uh, of the stakeholders, uh, both government and, and non-government actors um, in the work ahead. Um, at this point, let me now give the floor to uh, the resident coordinator for Cambodia, Ms. Pauline Tamesis. Madam Chair, thank you very much for the opportunity to intervene. I've already learned a lot just listening to uh, the speakers of this panel. In Cambodia, uh, the UN has supported the Ministry of Planning uh, in coordinating an inter-ministerial process to finalize the Cambodian SDG framework and now in the process of supporting uh, the government in drafting their first ever voluntary national review. Um, there are 11 uh, UN agencies that are supporting this VNR process, and this has grown from uh, UNDP being the sole uh, UN agency that has been behind the Cambodian SDGs. So you really have a show of strength of how the UN system can s support the government. And I do recognize uh, the intervention made by His Excellency uh, Teng Panyatun, who is the delegate of the Royal Government of Cambodia, and uh, the work that we have been doing uh, together with uh, the Ministry of Planning. I do need to recognize the commendable efforts by the Royal Government of Cambodia to um, localize the uh, global goals. And in fact, in Cambodia, there is an additional goal on mind-free Cambodia to be achieved uh, by 2025. Um, more importantly, the effort of uh, of the, the government in putting in place the Cambodian SDGs is in their full alignment of the goals with uh, the rectangular strategy and the National Strategic Development Plan. This has been mentioned by many of the speakers um, bef beforehand. And here in this effort, the Royal Government of Cambodia has taken the um, MNE framework to coincide with the Cambodian uh, SDG uh, uh, targets and indicators. And this work has been led by UNICEF from uh, uh, UN in, in Cambodia. Um, notwithstanding the progress that has been made, there are still areas for further priority action. And there are four uh, that I'd just like to mention at this stage. First is in, the, in putting in place institutional arrangements for the CSDG to be implemented in a whole of society approach. I think a lot of lessons have already been shared by the panel speakers and, and I hope we can bring this back to Cambodia. Second is in the importance of linking planning with the budgeting because this is really where uh, you can show how domestic resources are prioritized for the national development goals. The, the, the third is in facilitating engagement of civil society and private sector in, in, uh, in the process, and in, in, in the process bring also the SDGs from central to local levels, where there's still a lot of work that needs to be done there. And finally, the fourth is emphasizing the need to strengthen 
data and statistics architecture and capabilities to measure progress and impact. Many have already made that uh, as a point. Um, I would like to use this opportunity to pose the question to Her Excellency Ms. Brigitte Suarez uh, from the Office of the Prime Minister in Timor-Leste. Um, uh, Excellency, beyond uh, government stakeholders, how has Timor-Leste engaged with civil society and the business community in the VNR process and in deepening the engagement and ownership for CSDGs? in the 2030 agenda, how can the UN system better support these efforts, particularly for countries that include additional goals in their VNRs? Thank you. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, and uh, thank you very much, moderator, for the opportunity to be included in the panel to share uh, our country experiences on how the process of VNR is being preparing and how the engagement of the government uh, with the civil society organization or stakeholders and other civil society organization and country. So before I answer the question, so let me uh, share a little bit the background on how uh, Timor-Leste engage uh, the stakeholders since the beginning of the adoption of uh, SDGs in 2015. So. In 2015, uh, when the adoption of the SDG by the General uh, Assembly in New York, at the same time, uh, Timor Leste uh, immediately, uh, Timor Leste immediately uh, formulated our uh, technical working group that are composed with the uh, government uh, entities and also the stakeholders like uh, civil. Uh, organization, civil society organization, uh, media, and also uh, ac academia and the other uh, civil society organization in a small scale. Uh, in the same time in 2000, uh, in this, this formulation of the working group with the aims of uh, preparing our alignment between our strategic development plan with the uh, strategic development goals that have uh, been adopted uh, since then. And uh, the outcome of this also, not only for the alignment of the doc or alignment of these two big plan, but also it's uh, come up with the roadmap implementation of the uh, implementation of the SDG itself. And uh, in 2000, uh, in uh, in this exercise also, uh, consult wide consultation has been done with all the stakeholders to make sure that the inclusive of uh, opinion uh, it's also accommodated into the uh, into the process of the alignment uh, alignment of these two big planning and uh, to answer your question now uh, the composition uh, for 2019 uh, 2018 and 19 uh, the preparation of the VNR itself uh, is uh, the engagement of stakeholders is not only happen in the preparation of the VNR at the moment, but it's already happened since the beginning of the adoption of uh, SDGs uh, itself. And for 2019, uh, when the country decided to do our uh, VNR process, Timor Leste, uh, government of Timor Leste decided to reactivate it again, working group, call back uh, the working group to. Uh, facilitate the whole process of the uh, uh, VNR preparation. And uh, the UN countries' uh, residents in Timor-Leste, it is really uh, supportive uh, agencies and uh, the coordination, regular coordination, and we acknowledge that the country residence, uh, country residence uh, coordination in Timor-Leste is fully uh, support the process fully support the process and uh, it is leading uh, to the multi uh, multi consultation stakeholders around uh, the country and um, answer to the question of how this process is uh, being taken so the process is being taken uh, regular we have a regular meeting with all of our uh, stakeholders in the working group so the working group composition of the working group is uh, composed with the uh, government as the leading agency and it's to uh, highlight it here that the government uh, leading, government driving and the government ownership is the most important part and uh, 
the government is still leading the process of the VNR, and we have the representative of the civil society organization. In the civil society organization also, we have the representative of the marginal group, uh, youth group, disabilities group, women, and uh, also media uh, groups, private sector representative, and also uh, private uh, and also development partners we consider as the observer and also as our uh, sharing partner that are helping us on the whole process of preparation of this uh, VNR. And, uh, and And the most important things, uh, and one of the more, most important things here also, the working group itself, uh, it has been, uh, it has been uh, consulted uh, with very, very, uh, very, very uh, regular, which is the, uh, considered as the... Uh, considered as the awareness of calling back uh, how importance of the uh, implementation of SDGs, not only the government is uh, giving the opinion, but all the other uh, sectors, for example, all the other stakeholders, for example, like uh, civil societies, uh, development partners, and community itself, it is uh, really important to have uh, their opinion in the process. And uh, also, one other important uh, point here is the, the government of Timor-Leste have a really strong commitment, and also the policy uh, where the whole process is regularly reported in the Council of Ministers, and also the parliament is uh, keep informed in regarding the, the whole process that has uh, been taken. And uh, the other uh, more, uh, the other uh, idea, not only idea, but the other issues that been, uh, the other uh, initiative that been taken by also the working group is the uh, GSO. So with the GSO, our voluntary advisory group was established and it's uh, link the working group with the VNR process to the grassroots and also as well as providing space for dialogue on how uh, development uh, issues have uh, been taken care of. And in regarding the, in the, uh, in regarding the coordination uh, support of the country, uh, UN country system in, the country, uh, in, 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 in every country here, uh, I would like to emphasize that the uh, continuing support of how the national uh, government uh, in collecting data, analysis data, and also uh, making sure that our, uh, our uh, SDGs is being integrated, fully integrated into uh, our national, uh, national priorities or national development plan, it, it is really important to have uh, your support. And at the moment, for example, like the Timor-Leste government is already established one mechanism of monitoring on how the progress of uh, SDGs uh, SD is being uh, implemented. So this uh, mechanism is also given, uh, enable the government and also the civil society to see how, uh, what is the progress, what, uh, what, what uh, we have been done so far and what has, uh, uh, has uh, been not done, and then what is the, uh, the best to do for the future. So I believe that uh, with the support, continuing support of the UN country team will be really helping uh, our government uh, and also really helping our uh, implementation of SDGs, not only for the preparation of VNR, but also beyond the, uh, uh, the VNR itself. So at the moment, we are working on the uh, operationalizing or uh, operationalizing the global indicators into our national indicators. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you again for highlighting uh, the effort to localize the global goals of the S, uh, as articulated uh, in the 2030 agenda. And here we see the example of Cambodia in their nationally determined objective for a um, 
mine-free Cambodia. And we also uh, have heard again the important link, the importance of linking planning and budget. And also we, in addition, in, in the cons consultative process, uh, in addition to the sectors already mentioned earlier, uh, we heard that there is also important to include media in, in consultation because the, this will help feed into the narrative of uh, the implementation of, uh, of, uh, of our uh, SDGs and also um, inviting development partners um, as observers. And finally, we have heard that uh, consultations uh, in Timor-Leste um, began uh, soon after the SDGs themselves were adopted by, by, the, by the General Assembly in the United Nations. So um, before I release uh, our distinguished panelists uh, this morning, uh, we have actually heard from 16 of the 19 countries that will be presenting. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I, I'm advised that we don't have time anymore for any more interventions from the floor. So at this point, um, please help me thank our distinguished panelists for spending the time with us this morning. Thank you very much. And uh, as soon as the stage is uh, vacated, I will give back the floor to the chair. Thank you for your attention. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to invite the distinguished delegates to intervene on Agenda Item 2, Regional Perspectives on Progress on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, I kindly remind delegates to limit their statement to no longer than three minutes length to allow all delegates the opportunity to speak. To begin, I would now like to open the floor for statements and views from members and associate members. Uh, I recognize the distinguished delegate from Tonga. Thank you, Madam Chair. Honorable Ministers, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, UN family, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the government of the Kingdom of Tonga, I am honored to deliver our country statement to the sixth Asia Pacific Forum for Sustainable Development. At the outset, I would like to congratulate the UNSCAP for hosting well this momentous forum and acknowledge their ongoing technical support on our journey on SDG and the preparation of Tonga's voluntary national report. Tonga commits to the achievement of the Agenda 2030 and Sustainable Development Goals with the demonstrated leadership of democratic government to align the Tonga Strategic Development Framework 2 to SDG, Samoa Pathway, and the United Nations Pacific Strategy. The successful ending of the MDG and Tonga's Development Framework in 2014 had the foresight exchange planning to, cut, to guide planners in cabinet and government with the development of the Tonga Strategic Development Framework 2 from 2015 to 25 and lesson learned from the unfinished business of MDG. Tonga's sustainable development is guided by Tonga's motto, God and Tonga are my inheritance, with emphasis to be cohesive in order be, to be fruitful. Tonga pioneered together with few other countries in the world in localization of SDG through the government one process tool of integrated corporate planning and budget process, MNE and audit system. Voluntary National Report to the High Level Political Forum 
further strengthen the established system of Tonga strategic development framework with SDG Samoa Pathway and UNPS to ensure effective reporting mechanism for Tonga. The status of Tonga's preparation of our VNR, phase one of highlighting key messages for Tonga has been completed and is progressing to the write-up of full report and processing government endorsement before its official submission to the United Nations. Madam Chair, Tongan government commits to achieve Agenda 2030 for betterment of the people of Tonga. To conclude, I would like to acknowledge the, un the ongoing support of development partners, the UNSCAP, UNDESA, UNDP, the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, and also the Joint Office of UNDP in Tonga. I also like to acknowledge the support of donor partners, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, China, World Bank, ADB, and the European Union. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, distinguished delegate from Tonga. Uh, a correction statement. These are statements for uh, the agenda item three. Uh, now I invite the distinguished delegate uh, from Turkmenistan. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, dear ladies and gentlemen. Turkmenistan is committed to the implementation of the Agenda 2030, and we believe that the Sustainable Development Goals can be achieved only based on coordinated actions of all national partners in the economic, social, and environmental spheres under the con conditions of political stability and sustained economic growth. Among the institutions' innovations, it is worth uh, mentioning the establishment by the President of Turkmenistan of the post of National Coordinator on SDGs. In addition to that, the working group at the level of the Deputy Ministers of the 54 state institu institutions was established. This allowed to assign responsibilities on the implementation of the concrete SDG targets and indicators under the relevant ministers and institutions, including parliament and NGOs and ombudsman office. Now, this working group is carrying out active work on preparation of VNR of Turkmenistan on SDGs, which will be presented in July this year at the high-level political forum. Moreover, the initiated institutions level allow to create a platform for intersectoral cooperation and discussion of progress in the implementation of the SDGs. This platform efficient, effectively solves the problems of vertical and horizontal coordination. The national coordinator monitors the process of achieving the SDGs at the national level, coordinates the efforts of all parties involved. To this and the created working group organized a discussion of a wide range of issues related to the achievement of specific goals and targets of sustainable development with the participation of rep representative of relevant scientific and research structures, as well as partners from UN agencies and international organizations. Turkmenistan already taken a number of important steps for the practical implementation of Agenda 2030 at the national level. The starting point of our actions was the approval by the government in 2015 of the National Strategy for Sustainable Socioeconomic Development, which determined the main direction for development up to 2030. The main goal of the national strategy is the trans to transform the national economy from administrative to indicative planning to achieve a balance between the contribution of public and private property on the formation of gross domestic product and the development of the national economy, introducing the principles of a green economy into production, innovative development and social support to the most in need and creating conditions for the realization of individual potential of each person. In conclusion, I would like to note 
that the strategic course of economic development of Turkmenistan is focused on the international innovative type, industrial innovative type of economic growth, on ensuring the high competitiveness of national economy and the social well-being of the population. In these regards, Im implementation of the SDGs and active cooperation with the UN are the main priority priorities for the development of our country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I invite the distinguished delegate from uh, Australia. You have the floor. Um, sorry, Ar Armenia, you have the floor. Uh, we are neighboring, so it doesn't make much difference. Thank you, Chair. Um, at the outset, I would like to thank the UNSCAP uh, for its consistency in organizing forums on sustainable development goals. It has become a good traditional platform of sharing good practices and exchanging experiences. <clears throat> the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development Goals outlines a global comprehensive policy framework for cooperation on local and regional levels. The relevance of regional and sub-regional cooperation to successful implementation of Agenda 2030 cannot be overemphasized. Such cooperation is not only a basis for addressing and advancing mutual interests between neighboring nations, but also represents an important confidence-building measure. In July last year, Armenia presented its first voluntary national review on the implementation of SDGs at the high-level political forum. This important exercise coincided with the decisive political transformation determined by vibrant democratic processes in Armenia. The compatibility of our ambitious reform agenda with sustainable development goals is a comprehensive process which is high on our agenda. We underline the critical role of Goal 16, which is crucial for expanding opportunities for the population. In Armenia, we are privileged to work with a vibrant and ever stronger civil society, which is an integral part of our public life. The political transformation that took place recently in my country has unleashed new opportunities, which will help to accelerate the implementation of SDGs. Specifically, it has removed the main bottleneck to sustainable development, the lack of political will or the comfort of preserving the business as usual. Dear colleagues, Armenia is committed to the creation and development of knowledge-based and innovative platforms that will leverage the impact and accelerate the implementation of the development agenda. We recognize the indispensable role of the UN and its specialized agencies, as well as the role of cooperation with other potential partners. We are happy to note that Armenia's model of partnership with the UNDP already serves as a scalable pilot. The data recently published by the Global Innovation Index highlights that innovation, in fact, is not limited to the most advanced economies. According to the index, Armenia, a middle-income country, continues to be classified as an innovation achiever. In this regard, it is worth mentioning that Armenia will be hosting the World Congress on Information Technologies later in October this year. And seizing this opportunity, I would like to invite all relevant stakeholders to take part in this remarkable event. Uh, Madam Pr President, last year, Armenia adopted its national disaster risk strategy, translating the commitments of the Sendai framework and the relevant SDGs into tangible measures for sustainable, risk-informed, disaster-resilient sectoral development. In June 2018, Armenia hosted the sub-regional platform for Central Asia and Caucasus for disaster risk reduction. The reinvigoration of the National SDG Innovation Lab, a joint initiative between the government of Armenia and the UNDP, aiming to accelerate the SDGs with a focus on the smart development, the elaboration by the National Statistical Service of a global metadata of relevant documentation on all indicators are considered among the achievements of SDG implementation process. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, distinguished delegate from Armenia. Now I invite the distinguished delegate from Australia. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Excellencies and Delegates. Australia supports the UN High-Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development as the mechanism for follow-up and review of the SDGs. 
We also welcome the work underway here at the Asia-Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development as an important mechanism to develop regional perspectives on the 2030 Agenda and ensure they are fully reflected at the UN High-Level Political Forum each year. Australia delivered its first VNR on our implementation of the SDGs at home and abroad to the UN High-Level Political Forum in New York in 2018. An important feature of Australia's VNR approach was to ensure we were open and inclusive throughout our preparatory consultations, the drafting process and at our presentation at the HLPF. The Australian Government worked very closely with peak bodies for Indigenous Australians, civil society and the private sector and to exemplify the whole of community approach Australia took to our VNR development and, development and delivery our VNR was presented at the HLPF by Australia's Ambassador to the United Nations, by an Indigenous Youth Representative and by a Business Representative. Our VNR outlines domestic initiatives that support the SDGs and our contribution to development and economic growth in the Indo-Pacific region. Australia's VNR was launched together with two supporting websites, an SDG data reporting platform and the Australian SDGs website. The Australian Government uh, SDG data reporting platform houses official government data on 118 of the 232 SDG indicators. The Australian SDGs website is run by the Global Compact Network Australia and includes a growing collection of case studies showcasing efforts to progress the SDGs from government, businesses, civil society groups and local communities. This transparency and openness about our VNR is important to ensure open access to information about Australia's SDG implementation and to share lessons learned um, both within our country and to other regional partners preparing their own VNRs. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, now I invite the distinguished delegate uh, from Lao PDR, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam She, for giving me applause. Um, Madam She, this thing is delegates. At the outset, my delegation would like to congratulate you, Madam She, and your bureau for your election as a chair of this meeting sessions. The six Asia Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development play an important role and offers us a platform to discuss exchange experiences and lessons learned so that we can together chart a course for the further development cooperations. Madam Chair, my delegations would like to share experience of our national voluntary reports. At the national level, the Lao government is strongly committed to SDG implementations as a resource. In September 2017, the National Steering Committee for SDG Implementations was at Strabrisis and chaired by the Prime Ministers. The committees then appointed the National SDG Secretaries in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Planning and Investment. In relation to the SDG Voluntary National Reviews, my delegations would like to take this opportunity to share our lesson learned that the Lao PDR was one of the 47 countries selected to present its VNRs on the progress of the implementations of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development at the High Level Political Forum in New York in July 2018. The Lao PDR's VNR's report focused on all 17 goals of SDG and its own localized SDG 18. While highlighting the prominent linkage between the 2030 agendas and the National Development Vision 2030. Moreover, the National SDG Secretaries has already initiated an outreach program in collaboration with UN agency and some government office at these rental and local levels. 
future stakeholders' consultations will focus, among others, on questions relevant to the LAVIDA for each SDG, on challenges identified in the VINA, and on engagement with a broad audience of stakeholders. The first lesson learned from the VNR process is that SDG localization has to be consequent to cover it seamlessly with the development of national plan. In addition, the administrative data system in many goals areas, especially SDG indicators, still need to be harmonized to the national development plans and streamlined and strengthened by enhancing institutional and statistics capacities building. Therefore, cooperation and coordination across line ministry and between central and local level need to improve so that the interventions can cover X to reach the most left behind group. And the last one is the government will continue to identify development financing needs for implementing the 2030 agendas. Madam Chair, allow me to conclude by expressing our sincere thanks to the UN SCAPs and other development partners for the continued support rendered to the government of La PDRs in the implementation of the international development agenda as well as to, per to pursue the national development endeavors. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I invite the distinguished delegate from Turkmenistan. Uh, Madam. Sorry, there's a mistake. Now uh, I invite the distinguished delegate from Nepal. Thank you, Madam Chair. We are approaching close to four years since the landmark transformative and ambitious 2030 agenda for sustainable development was adopted. Ever since, Nepal's focus has been on its timely, effective, and full implementation. Some progress has been achieved, but it falls short of our expectations. This is where the importance of this forum lies. The forum this year has a key business of reviewing goals 4, 8, 10, 13, 16, and 17. Nepal in 2017 presented voluntary national review that realistically highlighted the status of the implementation of 2030 agenda and our unique and special challenges. Having gone through a phase of conflict and prolonged political transition, Nepal has now attained much needed political stability. Our right-based and con uh, inclusive constitution provides conducive framework for development and economic growth. Nepal's smooth transition from a unitary to a federal state provides a hope for empowering people and propelling inclusive growth. A strong two-third majority government in the federal level and in the provinces provides sound basis to carry forward the implementation of SDGs. With this, our focus has now been to economic development under a broad national vision of prosperous Nepal, happy Nepali. We are currently preparing 25-year long-term vision of Nepal to begin with the 2015th periodic plan, which aims to lay out a transformational development pathway and bring about structural changes in the economy. In addition, we have also prepared the SDGs, needs assessment, costing, and financing strategy. The document identifies the financing gap for SDGs, patterns of available resource allocation against investment requirement in major SDG areas, and the interventions and strategies needed for achieving the goals. Madam Chair, Nepal has streamlined many steamed SDGs into the national plans and programs. They are now being localized. Progress has been recorded in some key goals that are under discussion at this forum. We have laid a special focus on achieving all the targets and indicators of goal four. Various programs have been implemented to enhance access, retention, and quality education, particularly for the poor and disadvantaged groups. On goal eight, Nepal launched contribution-based social security scheme, which is a historical step towards promoting sustainable and inclusive economic growth for people working in all sectors of economy and achieving decent work for all. 
On goal 10, we are committed to reducing all forms of inequality. Targeted programs have been implemented to achieve inclusive growth at local, provincial, and federal levels. But when it comes to reducing inequality among countries, much depends upon the international community. The world should not lose sight of countries in special situations, especially those LDCs that are also landlocked. On goal 13, Nepal is taking a number of initiatives to integrate mitigation and adaptation at the national and sub-national levels in order to reduce vulnerability to climate change and its impacts. On goal 16, Nepal has come a long way to participate in democracy and elements of good governance like transparency and accountability. Independent and impartial justice system is signed qua norm for a peaceful society. We have put in place necessary constitutional and legal framework ensuring access to justice to all of our people. When it comes to global partnership, there is a great scope to improve. An enhanced global partnership tailored to the needs of the countries in a special situation is required to ensure timely and effective implementation of the agenda. A genuine spirit of global solidarity to support and complement the efforts of the poorest and your, most vulnerable uh, can only is, ensure that time is over. no uh, one is left behind. To conclude, uh, Madam Chair, we must much uh, match our course with actions. We create this forum for review and follow-up of the SDGs. Its credibility will be defined by its ability to provide political leadership and guidance to implement the 2030 agenda effectively. For this, APFSD must seek to ensure that the UN has system-wide coherence in sustainable development programs and policies, particularly in the context of the reposition UNTS so that it can deliver as one on the ground. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate from Nepal. Now I invite the distinguished delegate from Malaysia. Thank you, Madam Chair, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honor for me from the National Audit Department of Malaysia, or the Supreme Audit Institution of Malaysia, to be here at this important event. I would like to take this opportunity to make a brief report on the involvement of the Supreme Audit of Malaysia in the audit of preparedness for the implementation of SDG in Malaysia. Building on the recognition of United Nations through the resolution during the General Assembly in 2014 on promoting and fostering the efficiency, accountability, effectiveness, and transparency of public administration by strengthening supreme audit institution and intercise Beijing Declaration in 2013 on promotion of good governance by enabling size to help respective government to improve performance, enhance transparency, ensure account accountability, maintain credibility, fight against cor corruption, promote public trust, and project the interests of their citizen. The Abu Dhabi Declaration adopted at the Inkosai in 2016 agreed in making a meaningful independent audit contribution to the two, uh, 2030 agenda. The Intosai strategic plan for 2017 to 2022 has included SDG as the cross-cutting priority in the context of each nation's specific sustainable efforts by assessing the readiness of national system through conducting performance audit on preparedness for implementation of SDG, whole of government approach as one of the approach on how SAI can contribute to the realization of SDG. The National Audit Department of Malaysia has conducted, conducted the audit of Malaysia's preparedness to ensure the success of the SDG's implementation in Malaysia in line with Intosai strategic plan in September 2018. The audit program was focused on adaptation of SDG <coughs> into the national context, inst institutional framework, integration and inclusiveness, 
identification of the means of implementation in terms of secured resources and capability, identification mechanism, mechanism established, and the function to monitor, follow up, review, and report, as well as lessons learned from the previous MDG. Madam Chair, the main audit finding on Malaysia's preparedness on the implementation of the SDGs are as follows. Overall, the government of Malaysia has strategically put in place mechanism and procedure map, map against the aspect of SDG inter interconnection for identifying and understanding potential co-benefits and trade-offs as well as to identify SDGs gap in existing strategies and plan. The SDG will align, prioritize, and harmonize with existing national policies and development plans. In this regard, I would like to inform that the government of Malaysia has learned well from the uh, MDG's experience, uh, recognizing, recognizing its achievements and weaknesses. Malaysia has benefit, benefited Your from the lessons learned from MDG by developing SDG in in a structured and accountable platform by establishing as well as enhancing the integration, integration of the system and data. The need to manifest the partnership collaboration again amongst all stakeholders through both vertical and horizontal co coherent approach. There were also some areas that need to be focused, such as framing exercise of Your time indicators. Is over. The overall audit opinion of preparedness of the government Malaysia is that the government has adapted the 2030 agenda in, in its uh, national context, constitutional integration and inclusiveness. Lastly, I would like to invite all to read the full report, which is available at our website. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, now I invite the distinguished delegate from Thailand. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for Thailand, we experienced um, the voluntary national review process uh, uh, during uh, 2017. For us, uh, VNI is not just only the reporting system, but it's uh, the stakeholder engagement process that uh, we try to drive forward the uh, whole society approach for the SDG. VNI itself it has been will from public or the civil society that is a government self-assessment process where the government, they assess how far or how much they can implement the VNR. And they receive the stakeholder, um, the CSO, just only the input for the report. However, we think that um, the voice from the CSO quite and all the stakeholders in the society is quite important. That's why the government has established the mechanisms called open and working group with the government and civil society, where that uh, we organize the meeting uh, several times, like four times a year, to allow CSO to give their viewpoint and update the progress that they have been done uh, to implement the SDGs. We and I also, for us, is should present the homegrown approach or the business practice that can help countries to achieve the SDG. Because when the world leader adopt Agenda 2030 in 2015, the thing which is left untouched is that the pathway to achieve the SDG. And the countries have to think by themselves how they can uh, bring the country to the goal of the SDG. So BNR would be the good tools that when the country they present, they can show case or the, their business practice, their homegrown approach, or the pathway that the thing that is uh, the best way that they can bring the country to the SDGs. Also, the United Nations Development Systems Reform has come approaching to the second phase. The first phase for uh, the national level, which is separate 
the United Nations Resident Coordinator from the United Nations Development Representative is finished. And we are approaching the second phase of the regional dimension. And Thailand's of the view that the regional dimension is quite important to implementation for the SDG because actually in the regions, the best practice are the homegrown approach. We have in so many scattered around the countries. If we can connect that homegrown approach uh, and disperse the homegrown approach among the countries, that would be one of the pathway that uh, we can help accelerate achieving the SDGs. And I think that regional commission like SCAP is, can play this key role by have a co-cooperation with the sub-regional organization like ASEAN, PIF, SAC, and else to exchange this homegrown approach. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate from Thailand. Uh, now I invite the distinguished delegate from Bangladesh. Thank you, Madam Chair and distinguished delegates. Bangladesh was one of the forerunners in achieving the Millennium Development Goals. And with this experience, the government of Bangladesh uh, initiated very early uh, to include the goals and targets of the SDG into the National Development Plan 2016 to 2020. And considering the UN's theme, leaving no one behind, the government of Bangladesh has already adopted the whole of society approach, including the partners from the NGOs, development sectors, private sectors, and also civil society sectors. When particularly the government of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is so committed, given the experience of achieving the Millennium Development Goal to achieve the SDG. So there is the highest level of political commitment to achieve this goal, and to that end, she has created a high office in the Prime Minister's office to coordinate the SDG-related activities. And the Bangladesh has already published the mapping and a mapping of the different ministries and divisions of each of the 169 targets and 232 indicators. A data analysis gap for the SDG has already been conducted to review the availability and the various means of data generation in the country. This would also make very easier to allocate adequate resources to ministries and agencies for accommodating for accomplishing SDG and to ensure the quality of expenditure. The government has meanwhile completed a financing need and also approaching the innovative ways to collect the finance from the other sources, bilateral, multilateral, even in the private sectors. And uh, for the effective monitoring of these uh, policies and the goals, the government has already prepared a monitoring and evaluation framework 2018 and on the basis of that framework Bangladesh already participated in the via on, on the voluntary uh, uh, national review process in 2017 with a very high level team headed by the honorable former honorable planning minister uh, at the ASLPF UN and uh, with these uh, achievements that we have already done in the sectors of the SDG and there is also a lot of challenges and that includes the, the data gap is one thing, and of course the climate change uh, challenges. And of late, all of you distinguished members, you know the Bangladesh is heavily burdened. Over the one million refugees from the Myanmar uh, nationals into our countries, that is also affecting a serious problems and uh, uh, constraints in, in the targeting the SDG, particularly in that part of the Bangladesh. And in, in conclusion, Madam Chair, the Bangladesh look forward to working with the development partners and all the UN agencies in the coming years to achieve this SDG and, and uh, take the advantage of the experience of different countries who have done uh, better in, in many sectors. I thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, distinguished delegate from Bangladesh. Now, in, now I invite the distinguished delegate from Republic of Korea. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to share Korea's experience and progress on implementing SDGs. Korea presented its first VNR back in 2016, and it gave us a great opportunity to identify the areas where more work was needed to ensure the country's sustainability. 
while the third national plan for sustainable development was formulated in 2016, its alignment with the SDGs was not strong. There was a call for the SDG monitoring mechanism that is properly adapted to the country context and priority. Therefore, my government embarked on the establishment of Korean SDGs, or KSDGs, in order to set milestones toward an inclusive needs nation for all. Composed of 17 goals, 122 targets, and 214 indicators, KSDGs were adopted at the cabinet level at the end of the last year. The process of developing KSDGs was based on broad participation from the government, civil society, and academic experts. Fourteen stakeholder groups representing diverse segments of the society, such as women, people with disabilities, and youth, actively participated in the consultation for developing KSDGs. However, challenges still remain. First, this newly established monitoring mechanism needs to be of good use. My government plans to publish national reports on sustainability every two, every two years based on KSDGs. Such exercise will be an important input to Korea's next VNRs. Also, over the course of this year, efforts will be made to refine and strengthen KSDGs with various stakeholders. Second, SDG implementation at sub-national level is essential to align the local, national, and global dimensions of, of the 2030. As an 2030, Korea's local authorities are further adapting KSDGs to their local context. The central government is working with local alliances to, alliances to accelerate such efforts. While Korea is not the only country that has localized the SDGs, we stand ready to share our experience and lesson learned from this process with our neighbors in the region. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate from Republic of Korea. Now I invite the distinguished delegate from Kazakhstan. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to make this intervention. Uh, I want to share the experience of Kazakhstan on SDG's implementation. Currently, at the level of the government of the Republic of Kazakhstan has been settled the architecture of coordination and implement implementation of the SDGs. A coordinating council on sustainable development is established under the le leadership of the Deputy Prime Minister. Five working groups have been identified as working bodies in five key areas of the SDGs, planet, people, prosperity, partnership, and peace. Additionally, it operates one more group on the development of statistical data issues. In the process of implementation, implement, implementing the SDGs, we are guided by one of the important principles of the SDGs, no one left behind. It's critically important for us to ensure the voices and opinions of civil society, public associations, international organizations, and other groups are heard and reflected in each decision taken on the SDGs in Kazakhstan. Present architecture ensured the wide involvement of all stakeholders in the implementation of the SDGs, as well as the preparation of the first first voluntary national review, which will be presented this year in July in uh, New York. Each country builds its own mechanism corresponding to national characteristics and needs, but we are pursuing a common goal to achieve a high degree of integration of the views of all stakeholders into the policies and decisions made. We considered the process of preparing the survey as an integral part of the nationalization of the SDGs in Kazakhstan. The work on the VNR focused on analyzing all the goals which was necessary to understand progress, as well as identify gaps across the SDG agenda. The goal was to go beyond the bounds of statistical data and see an an objective picture of the implementation of the SDGs at, at both at the national and local levels. This work would, would not have been possible without the involvement of relevant public organizations that represent the interests of citizens and cover many areas related to the SDGs. A great deal of work on the, of work on the SDGs is entrusted to them. In particular, this concerns raising awareness of the SDGs among the population. At the moment, the preliminary draft of the VNR has already been prepared and is undergoing the first steps of coordination with aligned ministries, public and international organizations, as well as independent experts. 
In order to build work on a systematic and consistent basis, a roadmap, a roadmap for the review has been developed, which contains a step-by-step -step algorithm of actions as well as communication strategy. In April, we are going to devote ourselves to discussion of the review in the regions with all interested stakeholders. The events are planned to be held in the form of seminars to discuss the content of the Vienna. And in May, we are going to host the first Forum on Sustainable Development that will be held at the largest discussion pl platform of Kazakhstan, the Economic Forum. And taking this opportunity, I would like to invite you to take part in this remarkable event. We plan to present the Vienna draft as well as discuss the progress on all the SDGs and the next steps to be taken. One of the most important limitations in the implementation of the SDGs is the gaps in data on SDG indicators as well as inconsistencies between global and national indicators and methodologies. In some cases, when data is available, the necessary disaggregation of data by gender, age, and other categories are missing. In this issue, it's very important to create effective channels of communication of relevant stakeholders with the National Statistics Authority and our regional authorities. This uh, not only helps to collect additional data, but also strengthens the capacity of national statistics bodies. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished delegates from all the members. Uh, are there any other members who wish to speak before I open the floor to intergovernmental bodies and other bodies? Okay. Uh, now I will open the floor to intergovernmental bodies, UN bodies and specialized agencies and major groups and other stakeholders. Uh, now I give the floor to the distinguished delegate from the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, the representative from the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kazuhiko Takeuchi, the president of uh, IGES. Our organization partners uh, with many governments and stakeholders with the aim of facilitating the global transition to the sustainable future. Recently, our work includes support for the development of three voluntary local review reports, including one presented uh, by Mr. Umemoto, the deputy mayor of the Kitakyushu city. I would like to briefly explain some key points about voluntary local reviews, or V L R S. When carrying out a VLR, a local government voluntarily reviews the institutional setup and the status of its effort on the SDGs and uh, publishes the result as a report. Since they follow the standardized format of uh, voluntary national reviews, the VLR reports are comparable with each other, thereby promoting effective and practical peer learning, they can also support local government's effort to integrate national priorities into local planning, establish a long-term vision, and identify areas needing uh, partnerships to fill gaps where local governments alone cannot bring about all of the necessary transformation. Uh, there are three main ways that uh, VLRs have a great potential to uh, contribute to the VNRs. First, through VLRs, local governments will engage with the stakeholders in cities, towns, and villages. By getting inputs from VLRs, the VNR process will have a multi-level stakeholder engagement. This enhances the widths and depths of engagement and opens a space for citizens, local businesses, cooperatives, and others to constructively engage with local government in localizing and implementing SDGs. Second, VLRs uh, provide a reporting framework that ensure integration of the three dimensions uh, in addition to make, uh, uh, making certain that no one is left behind, identifying priorities and planning ways forward. VLR Lab, which will be uh, launched at our side event during launch time today, will assist in facilitating these processes and in the dissemination of VLR reports by utilizing VLR, VNR format. It becomes much more manageable for uh, national governments to integrate feedback from the local level. The third, uh, VLRs can accurately capture local progress 
especially through collection of standardized and proxy data. This helps national governments avoid under-reporting their total national achievement. I thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, representative of Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. Now I invite the representative of Indonesia Women Farmers and Rural Women Organization. Thank you, Madam Chair. As part of the Fisher Four constituency of the Asia Pacific CSO engagement mechanism, I'm pleased to read the CSO collective statement for VNR. Agenda 20. 30 fleetingly mentioned accountability. Moreover, it is through a weak voluntary process of reviewing implementation progress. There is little progress in setting up local and national institutions and mechanisms ensuring civil society and people's voices are reflected in SDGs implementation and monitoring. Effective monitoring and review at both national and local level requires high quality timely, disaggregated, and most importantly, accessible data. Access to information should be also extended to state policies and budget allocation. It also requires capacity building at all levels and institutions of governments. SDG implementation ultimately takes place at the local level. So having voluntary local review, VLRs, with robust people's and civil society engagement to collect data, monitor, and review implementation should be supported. States should also strengthen parliamentary oversight over organs of the state and effectively address lopsided government spending that draws resources away from basic public services. In, money, in many countries, People's data and bottom-up people's monitoring and reviews of SDGs implementation do not have space or are not recognized by the government. Citizen-led data collection and reporting should be encouraged. Civil society shadow or spotlight report should be widely circulated along with government reports. The accountability and interlinkage of the intergovernmental processes at the sub-regional, regional, and global level remain uncertain. At sub-regional level, there is a need to strengthen civil society participation. At the regional level, the FPFSD has only been a space for government to exchange and learn from each other. At the global level, the HLPF, which is central to the implementation, follow-up, review, and provision of political guidance and leadership for the Agenda 2030 has failed to provide any genuine accountability. The current SDGs accountability framework needs to learn and be informed by other review mechanisms within the UN system, such as its treaty processes. It also needs to directly confront difficult questions of development and rights rather than sweeping them under the carpet. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, the representative of Indonesian Women Farmers and Rural Women Organization. Now I invite uh, the representative of United Cities and Local Governments Asia Pacific. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. My name is Benadia Irawati Chandra Devi. I'm the Secretary General of United Cities and Local Governments Asia Pacific. I, I speak on behalf of the organized constituency of the local governments represented by United Cities and Local Governments Asia Pacific as a focal point of the Asia Pacific Local Government Coordinating Body or APLG. We are very proud to contribute to this regional coordination mechanisms that seeks to better represent and involve local governments and related sub-national authorities. We would like to start by welcoming the wording of the reference document in regards to the recognition of the essential role of local governments in the implementation and advancement of the Sustainable Development Agenda. We would like to further emphasize the need to institutionalize vertical coherence to articulate national and local government efforts in the achievement of the SDGs 
including those under review by 2019 High-Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development. I stand before you to offer our commitment to make our joint agenda a success, but also to signal specific challenges to our constituency of local governments. Allow me to start by emphasizing the unbalanced access to financing at the local level. Secondly, we would like to highlight the different realities in the involvement of local governments in the SDGs agenda, depending on the national context. Out of 99 countries that submitted the VNRs previously, only 39 mentioned full participation of local governments in reporting process, and another 20, another 12 mentioned only partial, partial participation. So thirdly, we would like to stress the need to ensure appropriate capacity building from the closest pair of the government to the communities which we represent. We are aware of our shortcomings, but also convinced of our potential. We present to you proposals to be able to enhance our contribution to the national agendas in the region. We call on the central governments and the international community to develop adequate reg regulatory frameworks and enabling environments for local governments. Cities need adequate human and financial resources and capacity building development that will make the local administrations in the regions fit to deliver the type of services that will pick up the sustainable development goals. City-to-city -city cooperation, empowerment of local government associations can be an important tool to this end. We further call on central government to accelerate the implementation of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in integrated fashion with the new urban agenda, Paris Agreement on Climate Change, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, and Addis Ababa Action Agenda. Development of national urban strategies with the participation of local governments will create true roadmaps for sustainable and resilient societies. Finally, we call for greater dialogues between the different levels of government and consultation for inputs, not only in the VNR processes, but in the achievement of SDGs altogether. For, from our end, we commit as a constituency to stand ready to complement national policies, develop strong transparent institutions, and deploy our catalyzing potential with all stakeholders mobilizing our communities for the achievement of SDGs. We look forward to our continued active engagement with ESCAP and the entire UN family in making this aspiration a reality. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, the representative of United Cities and Local Governments Asia Pacific. Uh, in the interest of time, we will now hear from the uh, last speaker for this session. I invite the representative of uh, Guyan Development Foundation and Asia, uh, DHRRA, Philippines. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, older persons or senior citizens believe that sustainable development goals can be achieved when issues affecting them are recognized and responded to. The Asia Pacific is home to 4.5 billion people, nearly 60% of the world's population. The region has an aging population and the number of older people is expected to triple by 2050 to 1.3 billion. At this point, one in every four people will be over the age of 60. This demographic change in the region clearly has a profound impact on all levels of society. One of the challenges as the number of older population increase is to create environment that is age friendly to include health, long term care, transport, housing, labor, social protection, information and communication. We have witnessed older persons with less chances of employment and unequal access to adequate health and finance. The informality of labor and underdeveloped social protection system in most countries in the region leaves the vast majority of older people without income security. Migration of young people to urban centers and abroad to get employment adds burden to older persons as they leave the responsibility of caring for their children to their parents and grandparents. This is a burden to many older persons, both physically and financially. It is thus necessary 
that countries have social protection systems where all parties can be supported. Together, we must end these negative and prejudicial attitudes and behaviors toward older people. Not all older people are weak and frail. Many are and can still be productive. Their experiences and wisdom are important resources, definitely useful in the achievement of SDGs. Aging is both an opportunity and challenge. We call on you to, one, recognize the older persons are resource and agents of change. Two, support the development and implementation of age-friendly, appropriate, sustainable, and accessible programs and services across SDGs. Three, create policy that endorse universal approaches to social protection, such as universal social pension, as it ensures coverage of the poorest group of older people. Four, promote the lifelong learning to ensure older people is equipped with necessary knowledge and learning tools. And five, promote the flexible retirement and reemployment program for older people. Finally, we urge all member states here to adopt the principles of development justice as you advance your work through UNISCAP as well as at national, international, and global levels. The transformation towards resilient society can be achieved when the rights of older people and their needs are addressed and their expertise harnessed. I am a retired teacher, now a full-time community development worker, and definitely not tired. Thank you. Thank you. I thank the representative of Guyan Development Foundation and Asia DHRRA Philippines. I thank you all for your contributions and for an excellent session. Uh, before we break for lunch, I now hand over uh, to our MC for housekeeping announcements. Thank you. Let me remind all delegations to submit their statements for session five this afternoon on progress on the roadmap and the 2030 agenda to the conference room officers. A form to request to speak should be completed to ensure that you're recognized by the chair. During the break, we invite all participants to visit the Pavilion of Partnerships on the first and second floor. On the second floor, you can explore the SDG help desk. And on the first floor, you can take pictures in our interactive SDG photo booth and meet our group of artists and their living SDG installations. We invite all participants to join our side events during the lunch break. Side events will run in parallel in two blocks from 12 to 1.15 p.m. and again from 5 to 6.15 p.m. Kindly see the program on our touch screens or the main APFSD webpage for more information. We will also put up a slide with room information in this conference room during the break. If you have not yet done so, kindly take a few minutes to speak to our volunteers to calculate and offset your carbon emissions. This can also be done by visiting the link you have all received via email. If you have not collected your DSA, kindly bring the required documents to the ESCAP Secretariat at the DSA payment counter in front of conference room two from now till 1.30 p.m. We will resume here in conference room one at 2 p.m. sharp with session five to review progress on the regional roadmap for implementing the 2030 agenda. Kindly return on time to avoid delays. Thank you and enjoy your lunch.
Check. Thank you. I mean, welcome. We need that. 